presents Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Today, from Yankee Stadium, it's the Texas Rangers versus the New York Yankees. The Game of the Week is brought to you by Low and Brow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Low and Brow. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Gillette, makers of the Good News disposable razor with two blades. And by Kemper Total, repair or replacement value insurance for new car buyers. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola, the game of the week. And it's the Texas Rangers in first place and the fourth place New York Yankees and Yankee City in the scene of the old-timers game. And, Joe, I guess the biggest surprise is not so much the Yankees are in fourth place, but that Texas is first. It is, and you have to add to that, I think, Vin, that when you're in first place, uh, when you're this late into the season, it's no fluke. They're there because they deserve it and they're playing good baseball. And Doug Rader, the manager, says, hey, if they couldn't play baseball, we wouldn't be there. But I have to give him, I do at least, a lot of credit because most of the same players were there last year, and he's really got them playing good ball. So the Texas Rangers in first place, the Yankees trying to get well in fourth place, and we'll get to the starting lineups. We'll have all the pregame stats and stories and numbers and everything that goes along with it right after this. It's here, the 84 Ford Tempo, America's all-new aerodynamic sedan. Tempo has the world's most advanced automotive computer. It continually monitors seven vital engine functions for maximum fuel efficiency and a quick power response. All this plus an interior with more rear room than a Mercedes 300D. Tempo, style and technology in total harmony. Have you driven a Ford lately? So Lou Pinella has started snacking on Sun Giant almonds. Why is that, Lou? Why not? Is it the crisp, fresh taste, or is there a more profound reason why you do? Why I do what? Why you love Sun Giant almonds. Why you serve them to your guests. Why you're nibbling on Sun Giant dry roasted almonds right now. America wants to know why. Why? Why should I settle for peanuts? It's something good under the sun. Sun Giant almonds. Now the cavalry has changed the way car insurance works with Kemper Total, new car repair or replacement coverage. If your car is ever badly damaged in an accident, ordinary insurance might not pay enough to put you on the road again. But Kemper Total will pay the cost to repair your car if possible or replace it with a brand new car of the same make. About three extra dollars a month in most cases. Kemper Total. Only from the cavalry. Bill Hodges, because when I was a young bad boy in Florida during spring training in the in the 50s, I had a chance to be with Bill Hodges for four or five years and play catch with him and get to know him, and he reminded me a lot of my dad. A big man, a very gentle, very amiable, uh, a gentleman. And as a youngster, I tried to pattern myself after the man that really was a sportsman on the field and a gentleman off the field. Baseball fever. Catch it. It lasts forever. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Mike Adamley back in our 30 Rock studios in New York. And one non-baseball note, last night Michael Spinks was scheduled to defend his light heavyweight crown against Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. However, yesterday morning the challenger failed to make the official 175-pound weight limit. And after a very chaotic and bizarre set of circumstances, the fight was ultimately canceled by promoter Butch Lewis. Michael decided, after we talked, that he would not dignify Mustafa's ignorance any longer. He would not allow him to go before the media again to further disgrace this promotion and put the blame where it actually lied, and that's with him. Now, last night in Major League Baseball, the Toronto Blue Jays beat the Chicago White Sox 3-2. That makes seven out of eight the Jays have won since the All-Star break. And that game capped a week of baseball that was punctuated by the comeback. 
Mistakes continue to plague the Los Angeles Dodgers, yet somehow they manage to win games. On Monday night against the Cardinals, this wild pitch with the bases loaded by reliever Dave Stewart led to a three-run St. Louis outburst and gave the Cards a 5-3 lead. L.A. trailed 6-4 going into the ninth. But Dusty Baker, who went 4-for-5 four on the evening, tagged Bruce Souter with this two-run homer with Ken Landro aboard, his second of the game and 13th of the year to cap a 7-6 come-from-behind victory. On Tuesday, another ninth-inning comeback allowed Philadelphia to move into first place in the Eastern Division of the National League. The Phillies trailed the Braves 6-5. Bases loaded here. Atlanta tried to turn the double play on Larry Milbourne's grounder, but the normally reliable Glenn Hubbard threw the ball away. Two runs scored, and the Phillies won at 7-6. And while we're on the subject of comebacks, how about the Astros' Nolan Ryan? On the disabled list earlier this year with a severe hamstring injury, Ryan on Wednesday won his eighth consecutive game, a personal career high, as Houston beat Montreal 9-4. In the American League on Wednesday, the Baltimore Orioles got a grand slam home run in the fourth inning from their all-star shortstop, Cal Ripken Jr., his second of his career, helping the Orioles to whip Oakland 6-2 and also stay on the heels of the streaking Toronto Blue Jays in the American League East. In Chicago, the White Sox decided to put Carlton Fisk to the number two spot in the batting order, and the move has paid dividends here against the Indians. Fisk put on a powerful display, clearing the fence not once, but twice. Home runs number 12 and 13 of the year for the veteran as the White Sox pounded the Cleveland Indians 8-0. And the White Sox are a game and a half behind the Texas Rangers in the AL's Western Division. Rangers, like the Blue Jays, one of the surprise teams in baseball this season. For a report, let's go to Len Berman at Yankee Stadium. Well, Michael, the first place Texas Rangers does have a strange ring to it. You know, their first manager back in 72 was Ted Williams. Their second manager, Whitey Herzog. Their third manager was Billy Martin. Lots of managers, lots of history, but not many wins over the years. Since the Rangers were born in 1972, they have been a study in frustration. A parade of managers wants three in a week, and players passing through a revolving door. And last year, even worse, the lowest attendance ever, and 98 losses. The season, a disaster. The team's ineptness reflected the confusion in the front office. Exhibit A, manager Don Zimmer, given this vote of confidence a year ago by the Rangers owner. Yeah, I think he's doing a pretty good job at this point with what he has to do it with. Just three days later, Childs fired Zimmer. Did Childs give him a reason why? No, no, I, no, hell no, I, uh, no. Uh, we didn't win. <laughs> we didn't win, and uh, th that would be the... But we didn't win a month ago, either. But they're winning in 83. A new manager, Doug Rader, their 11th in 12 years. A new general manager, too. On the field, no major changes, and they have no league leaders in hitting. But the Texas Rangers have stopped playing like Texas strangers. Well, Lynn, I think we probably weren't as bad as a lot of people thought we were, uh, as our 98 losses of last year would have indicated. We had good personnel, but I think some of the unsettlement in the front office probably had a way of filtering down to us. And Doug, as much as he has done, probably was a little fortunate to inherit good personnel. Yes, you're running more, obviously. You have more stolen bases than in several years combined. It's more of a National League um, brand of ball, and we have people that are capable of running. Tallis and myself, probably the foremost, and he encourages it, and uh, probably to the, to the extent that he would rather us run into mistakes as opposed to be, being passive and not running. It's on the mound where you find league-leading stats. Led by all-star Rick Honeycutt, they lead the league in team-earned run average. You know, we don't have anybody that just comes in and blows you away, but we're all consistent. We want to keep our ball club in the, in the game. And like I said, with a good defense, we've been able to do that. The, you know, pitching and defense carried us the first couple of months, no doubt about it. We played 500 ball uh, by doing that and, uh, you know, not beating ourselves. Uh, but then the hitting started to come around in June. We hit the ball real well. We drove in big runs, and uh, all the way up down the order, we swung the bag good. I think the question has to be, you've played on winners. 
Is this Texas Ranger team a winning team? Absolutely. Uh, I, I think they have a tremendous attitude, and uh, I think it comes from uh, Doug Rader, you know, right from spring training. Uh, last year when I joined this ball club, uh, uh, they had no direction. They didn't know where they were going. They didn't have a general manager. But uh, right from spring training, it seems like this club has started to develop a lot of character. They, they believe they can win, and uh, it's been exciting. It's never been exciting in Texas before. Take George Wright last year. He drops it. Now take George Wright this year. The exact same play. This time he holds on. That's typical of the great Texas turnaround. And joining me now, Texas manager Doug Rader in his first year. I, I think you've already lasted longer than most of your predecessors uh, with the Rangers. Yeah, that was a rumor. I, I uh, don't have the, the, the world's greatest security in a one-year contract in Texas. Doug, many of your players whom I spoke to the other night gave you the credit for the turnaround because these are many of the same players who lost 98 games a year ago. Well, you can't believe players. You know how they have a tendency to lie. But uh, it's nice coming from them, and uh, I appreciate what they have to say about me. But if the ability wasn't here to begin with, we certainly wouldn't be winning this year. I think that uh, there was just a, a great number of different things that happened last year that prevented them from uh, succeeding, and I think things are going just much better from the front office all the way onto the field, and I think that it's a combination of things that have uh, led to our success. Well, what do you pinpoint? Give me 25 words or less why you're in first place team today. Well, we've got a good attitude. We're very aggressive. Our pitching staff has done much better, and we're getting a little production out of everybody. Other than that, nothing. You know, the conventional wisdom in baseball is that the American League West is the weaker of the two American League divisions. I don't know if you agree with that, but because of that, does that give you a legitimate shot down the stretch? Well, I don't know about it uh, being weaker or stronger. You know, I, I'll leave that up to you, you experts to decide that sort of thing. But I do think that the American League East is the finest division in baseball right now. But I think that the fact that the, the Angels aren't playing very well and, and Chicago might have some problems, uh, Oakland and Kansas City have also had problems. So I think that because they're kind of backing up to us, I think that we might be there in the end. Okay, so you think then here on national television you're a legitimate contender the rest of the way? Well, we've proven it so far. All we got to do is keep pitching, hitting, and catching it, and we'll be there. Score more That's than the it. other team, right. right? Thank you, Doug Rader. Right. Best of luck. We'll Congratulations on a good year. So Doug Rader, the 11th manager in 12 years, and they're off to a great start. So that's it from the field. Let's go back upstairs to Vin and Joe. Okay, Len, and of course, one other oddity, Doug Rader, who had the nickname Red Rooster when he played at Houston, finished his career in 1977 with Toronto, and Toronto's in first place. So apparently he's got the touch of Midas. In talking to him, you usually say uh, who influenced you the most uh, as a manager, and uh, he gives a lot of people credit, but John McNamara is the guy he came across that really made him stop and think and, and really has, has made him what he is today. When you look at Toronto, you don't see the percentage, but it boils out to 595. That would be the second best winning percentage in the major leagues. Only the Atlanta Braves have a little bit higher. So the Eastern Division is certainly a very, very tough division headed by Toronto. Now, the West, they're having problems, as Raider pointed out. California seems to go in spurts, Joe, and they have an old ball club that's suffering from injuries, and Reggie Jackson is in the worst slump of his life. That's going to be one of those uh, hodgepodge uh, divisions. Anybody can win it in there. And Texas, as we said earlier, you can't be a fluke and be right up there. And Toronto, with the great pitching they got, uh, I'm sure baseball people are taking them seriously, and I'm sure baseball fans are taking them seriously because I really think they're going to be there all the way. And how? You're looking at the back of Ray Fontenot, a Cajun out of Louisiana, and we'll give you the Texas offensive lineup that Fontenot will be going head-to-head -head with right about now. Wayne Tolleson, the shortstop, will lead it off, and Bill Stein will be at second base. Then you have Buddy Bell at third, and Larry Parrish, who has hit three home runs in the two games here. He has just dismantled the Yankee pitching staff. Parrish will be in right field. George Wright is in center. Billy Sample around and left. Dave Hostetler is just starting to play. He's one of those free-swinging kids who strikes out an awful lot, but has hit the ball fairly hard his last three games, so they're going to DH him again today. Pete O'Brien is the first baseman, and Jim Sundberg behind the plate. De defensively, the Yankees have had to do some uh, patching up here. Willie Randolph is on a disabled list, and so they've kind of switched him around a little bit. Nettles will be at the third base. Andre Robertson is the shortstop. Campanaris at second base, and Roy Smalley is at first base. The outfield is Winfield, Mumphrey, and Steve Kemp. Weiniger is the catcher, and Fontenot is the pitcher for the Yankees. And that name, Fontenot, the full name is Silton Ray Fontenot from Lake Charles, Louisiana. 
So I guess the Yankees can boast of a Guinness Book of World Records. They have the most Cajuns on the same club. They have two, Ron Guidry and Ray Fondineau, and that's a strike to Wayne Tollison. To bring in Doug Kershaw to sing the national anthem they, for them. They probably will. <laughs> it's Louisiana weather, too. The temperature is 97 degrees right now at Fouled Away. The humidity, 53%. A breeze about 16 miles an hour out of the northwest and the temperature expected to remain in the high 90s and to stay hot and humid all day. A little comebacker to Fontenot and he'll turn and flip it over to Smalley in time for the out. Fontenot originally signed by the Texas Rangers and he was traded to the Yankees as part of an Oscar gamble for Mickey Rivers trade in August. Number one. He's only 25. He'd be 26 later on. Here's Bill Stein. Stein, the second baseman. One out first inning. Just the start of thing. A little bit late today. The Yankees had an old-timers day. Stein's had some problems with a pulled muscle in his lower back, but he's okay now and promptly whacks it towards center. Jerry Mumphrey got a good jump to make the play. You, you know, see, one thing, yeah, Joe. I was just going to say, you see Mumphrey, that crack of the bat is a misnomer. He was really in motion before that ball was on its way. I was going to ask you, have you heard any comment from the outfielders on getting a jump on a ball since they redesigned the stadium? Is it still as tough as ever? Tough as ever. It hadn't gotten any better. Buddy Bell, who was a 16th round draft pick by Cleveland, and in each of the last four years has won a gold glove. You remember his dad, Gus? In fact, in the last four years, his lowest batting average is 294, so he's a little off his feed right now. I was at Pittsburgh when Gus, Gus and I were teammates, and Buddy Bell, same age as our oldest Joe, and on the bench today, Buddy Bell says, meet my two children, and he says to the kids, he played with Grandpa. Oh, what a dig. He played with Grandpa. Does that sting? I remember uh, one thing, Gus Bell breaking up a no-hitter against Carl Erskine, I think it was, in about the eighth inning. And he broke it up with a bunt. Boy, that stirred up all kinds of controversy. Bunting a man out of a no-hitter. Fouled away. Of course, for Buddy, he might have been baseball's most unknown superstar because he spent his whole career in the obscurity of Cleveland. And now Texas, and finally Texas, of course, in first place, and people are well aware of. Outstanding player. Yes, he is. Down he goes. Fontenot goes a little sinker on the outside to get him. So the Rangers put their guns back in the holster. They're gone in order. And at the end of half an inning, the Texas Rangers nothing. And the New York Yankees coming up. Uh, Gus? That's me! Uh, do you do wheel alignments? Every day, pal. Yeah, but can you guarantee your alignments for the life of my car? Not on your life! At Goodyear, when you purchase a lifetime wheel alignment, you also get a written guarantee. Good for as long as you own your car. A guarantee that's got our good name on it. Now, who else can give you that? A lifetime guarantee? <laughs> for auto service that's guaranteed, come up to Goodyear. Is to good friend. Do you guys realize this is our fourth summer place together? Remember that old beach house we had? How about the time you two almost set the woods on fire? <laughs> okay. Who's ready for a lower brow? When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be lower brow. You know, I think we finally got this down to an art. Let it be lower brow. Mike Snuffy Smithson, who happens to stand six feet eight inches tall, and this is the New York lineup he'll face. Bert Campanera starting off at second base, and Butch Winnegar, the catcher behind the plate. Then you have Dave Winfield in left, and Greg Nettles will be at third base, hitting in the cleanup spot. That's not familiar territory for Greg, but he's there today. The DH, Don Bailey. Steve Kemp will be in right field. Roy Smalley playing first base. Jerry Mumphrey in center. And Andre Robertson is the shortstop. 
Well, as you watch Smithson and we talk about the defense, there is an advantage of being that big, I'll tell you. It gives a hitter, especially when you come over the top, gives a hitter a feeling of hitting uphill. You hit against Gene Conley? Yes, I did. He and was I, six feet eight. I know, and I used to always tell him everything in the valley is good. The peas <laughs> are grown and everything's fine, big giant. Don't worry about it. Bell will be at third base, and I hope he gets a chance to make some plays. He'll flash a lot of leather, as they would say. He's a great fielder. Tollison, the shortstop. Stein O'Brien. Sunberg, the catcher. Good defensive catcher. Can throw the outfield with pretty good speed. Sample, right is in center field, and Parrish is in right field. As far as Billy Smithson is concerned, at 6'8", the tallest player in the big leagues, he was Boston's fifth-round choice June of 1976, and as you can expect, he was also a basketball star at the University of Tennessee. He has a no-trick pitches. He'll throw a slider and he'll throw a fastball, and uh, Sunberg, in talking to him, said that you really don't know which is his best pitch. If I had to pick it before the game, before warming him up, I would say his fastball, but there are days when he'll rely on a slider, and he gets in trouble when he does what they call rushing the pitch. That is, his arm gets ahead of his body, and he'll be high, and then start to drop his arm to the side, and that's the warning light that'll go on, the red light that says he's headed for trouble. Well, Texas really hit a little bit of a gold mine at the University of Tennessee. They not only got Smithson, but a teammate of his at Tennessee is Rick Honeycutt. So two of their better pitchers. Smithson with a record of six and seven. Basically sinker slider. And an off-speed curveball. We'll see how he goes now with Bert Campaneris, then Butch Winninger and Dave Winfield. Willie Randolph is one of three Yankees really banged up. Randolph is on the 21-day disabled list, so they have to play Campaneris at second base. I say have to. You know, I have some Latin scouts who have told me they think he's 46 years old. Yeah, really? Well, uh, I, saw, <laughs> I saw a line said that uh, they don't know how old he is, but his birth certificate was lost in the Chicago fire. <laughs> they, have him, they have him listed as born in March of 1942, which would only make him 41 in Cuba. But uh, there are some people tell me, no, indeed, he's older than that. Well, whatever, he's remarkable. Bobby Meacham was recalled today to play for Randolph. Randolph, Gidry, and May are all banged up. Uh, not Gidry. Ken Griffey. So Randolph, Griffey, and May are the Yankees who are badly banged up, and another reason why they're in fourth place. O'Brien, Stein, Tollison, and Bell on the infield. And there's some of the big guys around, huh? Oh. Fastball and that's hit into center field. So Campanaris opens up with a base hit and George Wright gets it back in. It's a funny thing about baseball. Too many times they judge a man on his birth certificate. And it's really not fair because once you're in the batter's box, what's the difference how old you are? Here's Campy who has as much speed right now, I would say, as he had a couple years ago, and he was a great base runner then. He's a threat. Well, he is second in the active players on stolen bases behind Joe Morgan. Then you have Campy, Cedeno, and Lopes. The bird off the bag. He bluffs. One of you taking a strike. I think he'll give Sunberg a chance as we look at Billy Martin flashing some signs because Smithson is a big, deliberate thrower. And once he starts into motion, Campaneras will read him and away he'll go. He has stolen four and he's been caught five. Just the start of things. Bottom of the first inning, no score. Campaneras opens up with a single to center. Yogi Berra coaching at first, Don Zimmer over at third. ball the shallow center right went back on it and it's going to drop well we were talking about outfielders he not only got a jump but it was a bad jump he took one step back and it cost him the play so a little single to center followed by another one and a big man is in trouble you can see that the infielders were about as close as right was as right broke back and he just he got a jump, but as you put it so well, he got it the wrong way. Well, I can remember during World Series standing in the outfield when they'd work out before the actual series. And the stands were empty.
in the sunlight and the shadows, it was impossible to find the ball. Never mind when you put people in here. And now look out. One big man going up against another. Dave Winfield. Winfield, a great athlete, never played a, a game in the minor leagues and was drafted by four teams for four sports. You can't be much better than that. He couldn't wait. He was swinging, starting sometime this morning. Winfield was one of those guys who pitched in college and then played the outfield all the other days. And as a pitcher, he was 13 and one. Then he hit about 500 when he played in the outfield. He was too big for the room. Two on, nobody out. He's a pretty good situation player. What I mean by that, he has this thing when you talk to him that only the mediocre play at their best all the time. The good player, he can accelerate. And that's what Winfield does. You put him in the spot and he'll accelerate. Well, you know, after the 80 season, he accelerated. The Yankee gave him the largest contract in history. It could be worth more than $20 million by the end of its 10 years. When you get a contract like that, you get a cold, you get a call from the government to see how <laughs> you are. Way, yeah. How are you feeling? Meanwhile, he had Wettinger at first and Cavaneris at second. Nobody out in the first inning, no score. And Winfield up there, one and two the count. And Smithson off the rubber. That's a good play for the pitcher because we saw it uh, in uh, with the second baseman break in uh, Houston, it was. Talking about him being drafted by teams, he was such an outstanding, in fact, an incredible player. He was drafted by the Padres in baseball. Even though he didn't play football, the Minnesota Vikings drafted him. He played basketball, so he was drafted by the Utah Stars of the ABA and the Atlanta Hawks of the NBA. I mean, there's a young fellow who really had to make up his mind. Great natural athlete. Two on, nobody out, first inning, no score. You could see Sunberg right before the pitch move his entire body. So during this telecast, when we take our center field shot, you watch Sunberg. It looks like he's going to kind of tip us off as to where they're pitching. Watch Sunberg. They're pitching tight, all right. He wants it to happen right here on two and two. Winfield with 14 home runs. He had 10 of them by early June. Line drive, backhanded by Bell. Down to Stein, double play. Well, you said you wanted Buddy Bell to have a good play. You got it. He is quick. He is just like a cat. And not as he's only making the play, he's not satisfied to get one. Sets himself, makes sure he gets off a good throw. He does. And, of course, Stein is looking for the possible triple play because that was the kind of a play that usually happens. So quickly, how to break the back of a rally instead of an extra base hit down on the left field corner. The magic of the gold glove of Buddy Bell. I and mean, he won it four straight. Immediately helps lift Smithson perhaps out of trouble, although he still has to get Greg Nettles. Nettles hitting 268. Strike. Defensively, they really play Nettles to pull. Bell is wide of third base. Tolleson is way over, as you see. And look where the second baseman is as he protects the hole between first and second. For Nettles, a great pull hitter. He's hit more home runs than any third baseman in American League history. He's had over 300. He has Winninger standing at first. And uh, Campanaris was doubled up. One and one. Off speed for a strike. Good pitch. For Nettles, he's right on schedule. He's hit at least 15 home runs every year since 1970, and he has 12 now. So he's going to go for plenty. One and two. Off speed got him, and he made some very good pitches, Mike Smithson. So two hits, but the glove of Buddy Bell figures prominently a man left. And at the end of an inning, the Rangers nothing and the Yankees nothing.
introducing the Honda Aero. It's easy to ride because it's completely automatic. It starts with the push of a button. Aero gets you from here to there. Aero takes you almost anywhere. The Honda Aero. When you get one, you've arrived. I took Rolaids for 10 years. Now I get better relief from Tempo. With Tempo, no more tongues. It took remarkable Tempo to make these heartburn and gas sufferers switch. Tempo's soft, not hard and chalky. So it dissolves fast, fights acid and gas. And the soft Tempo form holds more medicine than the leading tablet. 75% more acid-relieving medicine. Better relief than Rolaids or Tums. Switch to better relief. Switch to soft Tempo. I'm playing ball, I don't care how much I sweat. It's part of the game. Oh, rap. But off the field, I want to feel nice and dry. And I want to smell nice. That's why I use Speed Stick Super Dry Antiperspirant. Speed Stick's the wide stick. Gives me effective protection in just a few strokes. Helps fight wetness and odor all day. Get the wide stick for protection. Speed Stick Super Dry Antiperspirant by Menon. At Fenway Park in Boston, the A's have broken open a 1-1 tie. Billy Allman lofts his short fly ball. Tremendous catch by center fielder Tony Armas. But he can't recover in time to catch a streaking Carney Lansford. A's lead it 2-1. We're going to the second inning. That's Rich Donnelly, the first base coach in the lower right. And he wants to especially send along best wishes to his father, who is celebrating his 74th birthday today back in Steubenville, Ohio. And over at third, Bellow's been around in baseball since 1948. Played here in New York for the Brooklyn Dodgers. He also played for the New York Giants, among many other clubs. Wayne Terwilliger. Those are the coaches for Doug Rader. And it'll be Larry Parrish, followed by George Wright, and then Billy Sample. Parrish is red hot. Ball one. He's had seven hits in his last ten at bats. He has had three home runs in two games here and eight RBIs. And he had five home runs against the Yankees last year, more than any other American League player. 2 0. Larry was a third baseman with Montreal, traded to Texas for Al Oliver. But he had to move to the outfield because of Buddy Bell. Then it's interesting watching this defense at the Yankees. The infield really playing him to pull as we look at Robertson, the shortstop, who's on the grass. There you see him down the outfield. Look at the center fielder straight away. They don't think if he hits the ball on the ground, he's going to pull it pretty much straight away if he gets him in the air. Pretty precise with the young left hander. Big chopper up along third, right on the line foul as it kicks off. That gives us a moment in talking about whether you should overly commit at any time because although it's a short porch down each line it's 312 down the left field line but the power alleys really fall away 387 430 417 and then back around to 385 353 and 310 so it's a, it's a big outfield you better be careful how you play them and it's been short remember when the monuments were part of the field it was about 461, I think, in center field at one time. Different time zone from home plate to center <laughs> field. Long distance goal. High chopper off the plate. Fontano over the shoulder. Catch throws. Got him. Good play. Well, Ray Fontano, the rookie, making a fine play. That's one of those frustrating plays because Nettles looks like he's going to make it. Fontenot makes it because all you have to, you can do is really wait for that thing to come down. You can't go up and get it. And he guns it, although he stumbled a bit. And luckily, Parrish, uh, not great speed. Fontenot couldn't have made the play, I think, if he was right-handed. But being left-handed, he was in perfect position. Good point. And here's George Wright. Ball one. George is a switch hitter batting right-handed. This Texas club has not gotten much home run production from left handed hitters. In fact, they only have eight. And Georgia switch hitter has hit four of them left handed. He took over when Mickey Rivers was hurt. And he has not let go of the job since. Hitting 279, eight home runs, 47 RBIs as you look down into the Texas bench. 
You know, a question I was asking Raider about it, and it might be very important. The heat in Texas in July and August will take its toll on these kids out away. And since 1972, Texas has had only two Julys where they won a little more than they lost. They've only had four winning Augusts. So it's going to be Raiders' job somehow to get this club through the heat of Texas in July and August if they hope to win. You know what happened to them the other night? They had a charter. They played at night, got on the charter, and got here at 6 o'clock in the morning. And then came to the hotel, checked in, and played that night. It's going to be, uh, when you talk about the weather, I, I know managers, some of them, Bertie Tebbets had a rule, you don't talk about how hot it is when you come into the bench and say it's too hot or this, that, and the other thing. Here's Billy Sambo fouling it back. Well, there's, a, there's an old story, right, about the coach saying, I don't want anybody to talk about the weather. It's a $100 fine, and the guy comes in and says, Fowler. Boy, it is. Who was it? Art Fowler. Yeah. Came in and said, uh, boy, it's hot out there, and then the coach started to fight him. He said, but that's the way I like it. That's the way I like it. Well, it's 97 in New York, just the way we like it. That's on the corner to sample. A little sample of Bonino. That's Don Zimmer, and then, of course, Billy Martin. Zimmer, at one time, managed Texas. In fact, Texas has just changed considerably. They had four managers in a week in 1977. Eddie Stanky replaced Frank Lucchese. Stanky quit after one day. Then Connie Ryan was the manager for a few days, and then Billy Hunter. And that's just fair in the corner for Sample. And Billy will get a ground rule double. And Sample now has hit in 12 of his last 13 games. He's red hot. It was fair by a good piece, and Spectator made, tried to make the grab, booted it, and of course, once he touches it, the umpire stops the runner at second. Talking about all the managers in Texas history, and of course, Billy Martin has managed the Yankees three times. He also managed in Texas. Drive to right field and deep by Hostetler in the corner and goes foul. This is the big kid that all of Texas is waiting for as Sample returns to second base. You can see why you wait for him, too. He did not swing hard at that ball and about drove it out of the ballpark down the right field line. He, he's a flailer. He's going to strike out a lot, but he's one of those fellas that if you work too closely or too long with his uh, swing, the cure will be worse than the disease. You want him to flail and hit. He has struck out 68 times in 178 at-bats, and I said to Raider, why is that? Is he trying to pull everything? Is his shoulder flying out? He said, no. He has good mechanics. His bat is too fast. Line drive into right center field. That should pick up Billy Sample. Over to get it is Jerry Mumphrey. So Hostetler, who has been hitting the ball hard of late, singles in a run, and Texas leads one to nothing. Hey, when you strike out a lot and you're a young fellow like Hostetler, a lot of the credit has to go to the manager for just constantly pumping him up. Now, just what he said to you, Vin, that his mechanics are good. There's nothing wrong with his swing. His bat is too fast. It's almost like being too handsome. You Did know? you have that problem? Was your bat ever too fast? Uh, getting it out of the rack was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> too fast. Here's Pete O'Brien. And he's going to hit one to the right side, and that's where Campaneris hangs out, and that'll be that. A double by Billy Sample, cashed in on the single by Dave Hostetler, and Texas on the board. One run, two hits, and at the end of an inning and a half, the Rangers won, and the Yankees nothing. Thunderbird. No 
sharp corners, no hard angles, no ornament more distinctive than the shape itself. A shape which effectively puts the wind to work. So the way Thunderbird looks helps the way it drives, the way it sits on its tires, the way it takes a turn. The result is a feel of driving that is pure Thunderbird. Have you driven a Ford lately? Your father gave it to you for your fifth birthday. Now it's your turn to pass it on. Any spray paint could make it red again, but Rust-Oleum, with an average of 50% more protective ingredients than its nearest competitor, can do more. Its protective formula not only prevents rust, but gives metal better protection against chipping and peeling. So if what you're painting isn't ordinary, why should your paint be? Rust-Oleum, any metal worth painting is worth protecting. Sports, the place to be for professional golf. Colonial Williamsburg lures the tour's top pros. The Anheuser-Busch Golf Classic. See the best on the best, only on NBC Sports. From Yankee Stadium in New York, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WPXI, the news station. the second inning with the Rangers leading one nothing Don Baylor the DH followed by Steve Kemp and then Roy Smalley almost got him ball one by the way Smithson is a little on the wild side he leads his pitching staff in hit batters already he's got a half a dozen trying to keep the ball in on these right hand hitters behind two and oh that's not the worst reputation in the world to have, that you're wild, but you're wild inside. Mm -hmm. If you're wild outside, that doesn't help you. Wild inside, a lot of help. Yeah, fear plays a part, all right. In there. Baylor, 10 home runs, 39 RBIs. He is one of the few players twice to be a free agent. The Angels signed him after the 76 season, and the Yankees after 82. Mount Tiffin. You know, Joe, I, there's, I sense something different about you today. Me? There, yeah. There, there, is a, there is a competitive gleam in your eye today. You're enough. putting on a gamer. I can tell. <laughs> I, I really can feel it. <laughs> and also the fact you're borrowing equipment is a tip-off. <laughs> I, I saw you borrow. Now, here's a guy who not only borrows Yogi Berra's sweatshirt, but says, sign it so I can sell it when I'm through with it. <laughs> yeah. Now, tell the people why. I'll have to tell them all. <laughs> all right. I've given away your secrets as Baylor strikes out. Well, I'm going to play in the Cracker Jack game in Washington on Monday, which is a great game, and the Players Association, Chuck Stevens' group, benefits from it, and I'm going to play in that thing. I don't have a catcher's mitt, so Dom Scala gave me the catcher's mitt. Ken Griffey gave me the shoes. Yogi gave me a long sleeve sweatshirt. Zimmer gave me a short sleeve sweatshirt. So I'd be glad to put that all on display for the folks who'll come out. You'll be a team photo all by yourself <laughs> with all that bar. You saw that you get married. <laughs> Here's Steve Kemp. That's my dowry. One to nothing, Rangers. Second inning. Have a good time, but don't get hurt. I huh? remember, you know, uh, you're not exactly 25 years old. I just, my speed will be the same. <laughs> Like Gomez said, the fast runners are catching up to the slow runners. Steve Kemp was in a collision in Toronto, and it could very well be why he's had only two hits in his last 22 at bats, just two lazy fly balls. size 16 shoes yeah. he'd put his kick his leg in the, uh, the sun would go behind his shoes he's, right he's the only player i can think of who might have been bigger than that yeah. line drive at stein two down you can't think of anybody else can no, you? johnny g uh, gene Conley, they were the big one jr richard yeah jim hearn was pretty good size yeah but not in not that, that big no here's roy smalley 
Smalley holds the American League record for most assists by a shortstop, but since then, range diminished and he's now playing first base. He was drafted by the Rangers. In fact, he was the first player drafted in the 74 draft by the Rangers, traded to Minnesota and to the Yankees in 82. And he has a baseball background, nephew of Gene Mark, his former manager. And of course, his dad played shortstop in the big leagues and played very well. Played with him with the Cubs, and I yeah. played with Roy Smalley in 1941 in Springfield, Missouri, on the same lots. Boy. Amazing the connections hold throughout the years as time goes by. Smalley goes down on strikes. Smithson has picked up his fourth. And at the end of two innings of play, the Rangers one run, two hits, and the Yankees no runs, two hits. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. The critics say it's a winner. Hilarious, hysterical, but have you laughing out loud. I'm all choked up myself. It's Buffalo Bill Wednesday. Here's good news about Exxon gasoline. Now you have a choice of how you buy it. If you pay cash at participating Exxon stations, you'll get a discount because cash transactions are less costly. But if you prefer the convenience of buying on credit, your Exxon credit card is welcome as always. Either way, the quality of the gasoline is the same. Exxon, quality you can count on. Austin's has great products, 18 great household products. Austin's is a grand old name. I'm Lisa Austin to tell you the Austin's Big Value Fabric Softener Store. Try Austin's Big Value and the national brands and you decide the best buy. Austin's is now 17% more concentrated and it costs less. Austin's Big Value Fabric Softener. 18 great household products. Austin's is a grand old name. This summer, you're invited to share Conneaut Lake Park in Conneaut Lake, Pennsylvania with us. A family resort with turn-of-the-century charm. Fishing, boating, swimming in Pennsylvania's largest spring-fed natural lake. Our sternwheeler, the Barber J. An old-fashioned amusement park with 40 rides from tame to terrifying. Fairyland forest, pony rides, and golf. Conneaut Lake Park, so friendly, so affordable, and so close by. From our family to yours. Sports Week, Sunday night at 11.30. There's a buddy of yours, Joe. Ken Kaiser, former professional wrestler. A blueprint for a body slam. There he is. He is listed as 288 pounds, and he is working the plate in 97-degree weather. And how about the poor catcher between the batter and the umpire having to put up with all that? And if he went to an Italian restaurant last night, it's murder down there. <laughs> One and one to count to Jim Sunberg. Don't, no, don't mess around. I saw Kaiser pick you up and hold you horizontally over his head. One and two. Jim Sunberg. You remember, during the winter, was technically traded to the Dodgers, but they couldn't get his contract squared away. It had so many ifs, ands, and buts in it that the deal was canceled. One and two. What was that deal? He wanted a big bonus for uh, allowing the Texas club to trade him or something? He wanted, uh, I think, all the land east of the Mississippi was part of it. That's a foul ball. No, I'm not sure the technicalities, but the Dodgers, the rumor was that it was going to be Bird Hooten and Dave Stewart for Jim Sunberg. And then they looked at the contract and they said it's impossible to fulfill all the deals. I thought he had one of those no trades, and he said, well, give me half a million dollars or whatever, and I'll say okay, and I'll go. Yeah, that's right. Waving a no-trade no, no trade clause was part of it. That's like when I went from Pittsburgh to the Cubs. He said, you're gone. Where? Chicago. How soon? As soon as you can get packed. A lot of warmth. No clause. No clause, no transportation. <laughs> two and two the count. Sunberg piles it away. Sunberg is a very popular player in Texas. In fact, people down in the Lone Star State think he might even eventually have political ambitions. Now, uh, Steve Garvey. The 2 2 pitch. Fly ball to center field. Gary Mumphrey right there. So Sunberg flies out, one down. 
And that'll bring up Wayne Tollison. Tollison hit back to the box in the first inning. Yeah, and what's interesting about that note, New York has been a graveyard for the Rangers. They have never had a winning season here, and they've lost more games in New York than in any other city in their history, but not this year. Wayne Tollison missed some games recently. That's Bucky Dent wearing the shades. Another high drive, and that'll give Mumphrey time to get under it. So Tollison a fly ball to center. Two out in the third inning. The Rangers leading one to nothing. And the batter will be Bill Stein. Bucky Dent, before the game, I was happened to be seated next to Doug Rader. Doug was asking about his ankle, and uh, he said the numbness is gone. It just hurts a little bit when I turn. It's still taped, but it sounded like uh, he's about ready to play. Two down here, one to nothing Rangers. And that's on the corner for a strike. Stein flied to center in the first inning, 0 for 1. We're at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees, in their great career, at one time played in the polo ground from 1913 through 1922. They constructed the stadium in 1922. And in April of 1923, it opened up, and guess who hit a home run? Had to be. Babe Ruth. And that was the beginning of it, the house that Ruth built. You know, as you look at the crowd today, though, as we look at the monuments in center field, usually on Old Timers Day, it used to be sold out. It isn't today. Bounce it out a shortstop, and that's Andre Robertson making the play. We can tell you a little bit more about monuments and plaques as well as the history of this great ballpark. At the end of two and a half innings, the Rangers won and the Yankees nothing. I'd like to keep that great GM feeling, Mr. Goodwrench, but how am I supposed to know when to do what? Just watch your 75s. 75s? Here, to help you keep that great GM feeling, your GM maintenance schedule calls for a checkup every 7,500 miles. Looks complicated, Mr. Goodwrench. It isn't. All you have to do is watch the top of the charts and your odometer. We take care of the rest. Keep that great GM feeling. Mr. Goodwrench makes it easy. With genuine GM parts. Okay, guys, I was a little off. We're not on Route 35. We're on Jackrabbit Road. Jackrabbit Road? Uh, yeah, we're not in uh, Pennsylvania. We're in West Virginia. West Virginia? They got some great looking steaks inside. And Moen Brow on tap. Let's go. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be Moen Brow. You really lucked out this time. Man. I knew we were in Brow. The world's top drivers seek the second jewel of IndyCar Racing's Triple Crown. The Kart Michigan 500, live flag to flag. Plus, survival of the fittest continues only on NBC Sports World. Part of the history of Yankee Stadium, we don't want to get in the way of the actual play. There are monuments out there, three of them, to Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Miller Huggins. And there are some plaques, and we'll get back to that in a moment because it's very much a part of the story. The Yankees coming up, it'll be Jerry Mumphrey, Andre Robertson, and then Bert Campaneris. Ground ball to shortstop, Wayne Tollison is there, and across to O'Brien, one away. There are plaques out there in center field. Ed Barrow, all right, I'll give you the, I'll give you some of the plaques and then you can come up with a trivia question and see right. if the people can guess it. The plaques are to Ed Barrow, Jacob Rupert, then Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle, Casey Stengel, Joe McCarthy, and Thurman Munson. And now we get to the trivia question. There are two cardinals among those plaques. Okay, now you folks can chew on that a while. Meanwhile, Andre Robertson takes a strike on one. Farmer Cardinals. <laughs> Farmer Cardinals. I mean, they were Cardinals. Oh, you talk about some years. Fastball hit foul down the right field line out of play. Well, in case you don't know, the two other plaques out there in center field, 
There's a plaque to Pope Paul VI, who set a mass for peace here at Yankee Stadium in 1965, and Pope John Paul II, who set a mass for peace here in 1979. End of monuments and plaques. Robertson hitting 14 of his last 18 as you look at Billy Martin and company they're down one nothing in the third and here's strike three to Robertson so two down in the third inning and Bert Campanera is coming up I would have to say the young Smithson has control that fastball control that slider and what is really helping both those pitches his ability to change speed so he's got it going for him in pretty good shape it makes for an easy game for Sunberg. Campanaris had a base hit in the first inning but you remember he was doubled up the key play if you weren't with us Campanaris and Weininger singled Winfield hit a bullet it was backhanded by Bell who threw down his second to Stein and they got the double play broken back ground ball and Bell stays with it throws him out. So busted bats and futility for the Yankees here at Yankee Stadium. And at the end of three, the Texas Rangers won and the New York Yankees nothing. Baseball star Jim Palmer. I hate dandruff. Cantegrin controlled Jim Palmer's dandruff for three days without shampooing. Three days. Tegrin test, day one. Beautiful, so far. Day two. Tegrin's still working. Good thing it's almost airtime. Day three. Tegrin controlled my dandruff three days. Jim Palmer, looking good. Try Tegrin. It passed the three-day test. Tegrin works day after day after day. I'm Rick Fowler, State Farm Agent, Orlando, Florida. Speaking for the thousands of State Farm agents around the country. With State Farm's Home Alert discount, you'll save money on your homeowner's insurance. With deadbolt door locks, a smoke alarm, and a fire extinguisher. You can't lose. You save money on your homeowner's insurance and you protect your home. Ask a State Farm agent about the Home Alert discount. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Was Gillette Foamy thick enough and rich enough to restrain a rushing roller coaster? No. So we improved Foamy, made it even thicker and richer. Now is improved Foamy thick enough and rich enough? If you thought your foamy gave you clean, close shaves, just wait till you see how much thicker and richer foamy is now. Gillette Foamy Shave Cream. We made it even thicker and richer. Tuesday. Is this gonna hurt? Nah, piece of cake. He died, Ben, just like that. What? Patients are dying, and Dr. Chandler thinks a nurse is to blame on St. Elsewhere. one nothing Rangers in the fourth inning with Bell, Parrish, and Wright coming up. He really showed his quickness. Here's the play. Winfield hits that line drive, one hand grab, and then turns it into a double play. And that's the difference between the major leaguer and the minor leaguer. Catching the ball is easy. Knowing what to do with it, that makes you the major leaguer. But he struck out in the first inning, hitting 284 and fouls it back to the screen. 0 and 1. Bell with 10 home runs, 45 runs batted in. ball into right center field Kemp and Mumphrey moving over and it'll be Mumphrey who's been a little busy right now he's had three of the last four putouts and four putouts in the game just keeping track of the pitches Ben uh, Fontenot has made 45 pitches and he's going into the fourth inning and Smithson has made 39 pitches so they're around that plate you won't see these hitters taking many pitches they better be with that 97 degree weather and 55 percent humidity. Can't waste anything today. Here's Larry Parrish. One thing Parrish did when he went over to the American League, he shaved off his beard. Fouled off. He leads the club. 300 average and home runs with 16 and RBIs with 51. But he hit back to the box in the second inning. Yes, it's that kind of a day. Take some rays, bring a little cold something, and sit back and 
Watch the boys roll around Yankee Stadium. A day like today, I quote from the book of Mickey Rivers, has become quite <laughs> profound. He said the wind was blowing 100 degrees. 100 degrees. And these folks are feeling it. One and two. out in the fourth inning that'll bring up George Wright good sinker way out of the strike zone and I mean he just kept going down 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 usually the pitcher will climb the ladder with the high fastballs he just kept going down 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 till he got his man so with two out in the fourth inning the batter is George Wright who struck out in the second inning the only run of the game Billy Sample doubled and Dave Hostetler singled him home and that's it we're in the fourth the Yankees might have done something except for that defensive gem by Buddy Bell. Check this way. One and one. Two balls and one strike. Closest Texas ever came to winning. They were five games out. Here they are sitting atop the heap, leading Chicago by a game and a half. Brown foul out of play. Texas surprisingly has never won a series against the Yankees, but they've won five out of seven so far this year, and even more surprisingly, three out of four here at the stadium. You had to really know the strike zone to take that pitch. Either that or being completely full as we look at Rocky Rowe, Weininger uh, used the appeal play on those started swings, not even half swings. They'll ask for an appeal every time. Three and two. And down he goes. Four strikeouts for Ray Fontenot. So he has retired the last seven in a row. And at the end of three and a half innings, the Texas Rangers won and the New York Yankees nothing. It was a sample double and a Dave Hostetler single to put the run on the board. Kentucky Fried Chicken and I are both masters at what we do. In karate, I'm number one. And Kentucky Fried Chicken is number one in chicken. They make it like no one else can. When I'm not using my hands in karate, they're wrapped around this. The Colonel's Original Recipe Chicken. It's got the taste that separates them from all the rest. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Learjet Coco Lima on the final gear down lock for four. The test pilot who broke the sound barrier, General Chuck Yeager. Reliability means a lot to me. That's why I go with AC Delco technology in my car. This AC far ring spark plug is no bigger than a bullet. Yet it's engineered to give you up to 30,000 miles of reliable performance. Never wait for trouble. Put high technology AC Delco parts in your car or truck. AC Delco is the way to go. You're about to see the biggest news in small pickups. Ford's new V6 Ranger drop in on America. Ranger's new V6 engine has more horsepower than Chevy's S10 or any import. It's the most powerful V6 in any small pickup. And Ranger has smooth riding twin I-beam suspension here. Plus the widest cab of any small pickup in there. The new Ford Ranger. Now with V6 power. It's down to earth tough. Now 9.9% .9 financing or factory cash available on new Ford Rangers. America takes on the world. The event, the 400-meter hurdles. And Edwin Moses is going for the gold. The World Championships of Track and Field on NBC. Helsinki next month, but tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, live flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the CART Michigan 500. Rick Mears, Gordon Johncock, Mario Andretti, and Indy champ Tom Sneva are all expected to take the green flag at the second jewel of Auto Racing's Triple Crown. Tomorrow, right here on NBC Sports. Be there. One to nothing in favor of the Rangers, bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Weininger followed by Winfield and Nettles. And the last eight in a row have been retired by Mike Smithson. Since Weininger's bloop single in the first inning. Ball one. Smithson trying to follow a pretty tough act. 
because the Texas pitching staff has done remarkably well. They lead the American League in earned run average, a little over three, and fewest home runs allowed, only 58. In there. Two and one to Butch. He's hot. He's hit safely in 12 of his last 13 and for seven extra base hits, including three home runs. There's a shot just foul. It's the only pitch he got inside. You can see Sunberg after he gave his signal with the index finger point to the right leg, which means inside. And he also shifted that way. Weininger took the 2 old pitch, which was on the outside corner, but he got that one inside and he was waiting for it. Well, the count two and two to Butch Weiniger. 1976, at the age of 20, he became the youngest player ever to appear in an All Star game. And he promptly bangs it to center for a base hit. Ball fumbled out there by George Wright. No. That was an off speed pitch. You can see the wiggle, and Weiniger just served it right back up the middle. That was a pretty good piece of hitting, man. Well, he's blazing hot, and now here's the big man, Winfield. So he hit that line drive that was backhanded by Bell. And instead of at least one RBI and runners at second and third or even two RBIs, it was a double play. There have only been 21 players in history who have never played in the minor leagues. Some of the greatest names the game has ever known, and Winfield is one of them. As deep in the batter's box as Winfield is, you would think you'd be able to catch that outside corner because he is not covering it and you'd be able to get him. But he strides into the hitting zone and that's the ball he drives in the right center field. See how far back he is? Yeah, he's 6'6", so he can almost match Smithson out there and jump ball. Standing at first, which Weiniger held on by Peter O'Brien. Nothing, Texas. We're in the fourth. It's pretty obvious, at least on this pitch, they're going to pitch away, hoping that Winfield will try to pull that ball. And if he does, he'll get the ground ball and they'll turn it over for the double play. Zimmer coaching the third. I doubt if there's a play on with this big guy in the batter's box. One ball, no strikes. And a ground ball to shortstop. Collison has it. He goes back to Stein, on to O'Brien, and they get the double play. Tell you plays like that, they really begin in the clubhouse with the clubhouse meeting with the sinker outside. Winfield thought he could pull the ball, hits it to the shortstop, and it's a routine play. If you're going to play him that way, you have to pitch him that way, and that's exactly what the Texas club did, and that's why they're in first place. It was an effort by Weininger to break it up. As you can see, him tried to go after Tollison. But Tollison, very quick in feeding to Stein, and they got the double play. And now Greg Nettles, the batter. One to count. 12 home runs, 38 RBIs, and a 267 average. Still 1 0 Texas in the fourth. On the corner. 0 oh 2. So far, this young fellow is a pretty good lesson to the young pitcher. If you're going to pitch, throw strikes, and if you can, throw low strikes, which is what he's doing. Now be the pitch. He moved him back from the plate. They're playing him to pull. Will he go to the outside corner? You would think he would. Well, let's see where he goes. One ball, nope. two strikes. On the hands, and it's fouled back out of play. You know, Greg Nettles is the last Yankee home run champ. He did that in 1976 when he hit 32. Before that, you have to go back to Roger Maris, who hit 61 in 1961. You're talking about lessons for young pitcher. Smithson is 28. And he feels he's really just starting out in his career. One and two. In the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. I'm interested to see where Sunberg is going to go. He went high and tight on the foul ball at Nettles hit. But he's been outside. I would stay outside, but it's going to be interesting. This is one of those battles. 
two and two the count one to nothing Rangers bottom of the fourth two out bases empty and he broke it down and in curveball three and two now what well I would the sinker for me I don't think I'd have gone three two because it's too hot boy he's up there in the high rent district yes, isn't he is. to have your names mentioned with what was it Pearl Bell he said that ain't no bad crowd to hang around with <laughs> down at his feet with that breaking ball so with two down a walk to Nettles and that's the first pass issued by Smithson and the battle will be the DH Don Baylor in Kansas City he hit leadoff last Saturday night odd spot to find him in the lineup Boy, he had a big year for the Angels in 79. He had 139 RBIs. You have to go back to Killebrew to find somebody who hit more than that. And that's going to go to the screen. Chased by Sunberg. Down to second goes Nettles. Makes a turn and holds. And we'll see how they rule it. It's got to be a wild pitch, although Sunberg didn't move. It was so far outside. But he's been around that plate. He missed with the breaking pitches, but that was just a look like a hard sinker. Take another look at it, Joe. He reached and you, know, you want to be hard, you'd call it a pass ball, but he just barely got a glove on it. They rolled it a wild pitch. But he didn't shift on that ball, which I'm a good surprise. Because Sunberg is a good catcher. He's a good catcher with a sore arm right now. I'm wondering if the Yankees are going to try and take advantage of it. Baylor with a chance now to pick up the tying run. Nettles at second. Went fishing, one and one to count. Baylor has been in a slump, but last night he went three for four with a home run and three RBIs. And Nettles taking his lead at second, two down in the fourth, one nothing Rangers. He's missing with his pitches in this inning, which he didn't do in the earlier innings. Uh, Sunberg won that ball inside. He got it down, but it was over the plate. It was out of the strike zone, but he'd have nailed it if it had been in the strike zone. Two balls, one strike. Two down. Fastball in there. That evens it up at two and two. So Greg Nettles walked wild pitch to second. With two out in the fourth inning, and the Rangers one run, two hits. The Yankees no runs, three hits. The only run, Billy Sample double. Dave Hostetler singled him in back in the second inning. Missed away with that fastball. Deck is Steve Kemp. Looked like he reacted as if he thought the ball was going to be inside and he should protect that part of the infield. And he got him looking on the corner, and Baylor can't believe it. So Smithson picks up his fifth strikeout as he hangs one on the edge and Baylor lays out a split infinitive and it is one to nothing Rangers at the end of four. We'll be back right after these messages from your local station. Sunday, get ready for high flying adventure on Voyagers. We can't land this plane. Then Poncho's hot date ends with a desperate showdown with kidnappers. Chips. I'm really kind of ticked off that you could say that or assume that. We just told Phyllis Smith if she's got cotton, she could do better for her family wash. I know my fabric softener works the best. Compare these all cotton towels, one done in your fabric softener, the other in final touch fabric softener. Which is better? They are both soft, but this one is definitely whiter. Whiter does mean that it's better. It's final touch. For a soft, whiter wash, add the final touch. I'm going to go out and buy final touch. Yep. All right. All right. The Steelers are back in training camp, and we'll have a complete rundown of the week's activities, including a look at the rookies versus the veterans in the Oklahoma drills, and some of the candidates to succeed Jack Ham. Also this week, highlights of the first USFL championship game, and a report on the Pirates as they wrap up their West Coast trip, plus a report on the finals of the West Penn Tennis Tournament, all Sunday night at 11.30 on Sports Week. Solid Gold, Saturday at 7 on Pittsburgh's 11. From Yankee Stadium in New York, at the end of four innings, Ben Scully along with Joe Garagiola and the Rangers leading the Yankees one to nothing. 
Vin, we mentioned that uh, George Steinbrenner is not here. He's always here on Old Timers Day, and uh, it's kind of sad to report that uh, he is in Columbus, Ohio. His brother-in-law, Bill Zig, died suddenly, only 41 years old, and oh. George is with the family. We certainly send along our condolences to the Zig family, and it's been kind of tough. George's father has been ill in Cleveland, and so it's been a tough time for him. Yeah, you go to the ballpark, and you try to forget your worries, escape, but life always comes creeping in one way or another. Billy Sample, Dave Hostetler, and then Peter O'Brien. One nothing Rangers in the fifth. You might remember if you're with us, Sample, a two-out double and scored on Hostetler's single. Billy Sample, a psychology major at James Madison University. Last year, he had a couple of streaks, including an 18-game hitting streak. He whacks that one foul, and somebody has a pair of hot hands. <laughs> there are only three players on his Texas Ranger team that really have the goal sign most of the time. Sample is one of them. Wright and Tollison are the other two. He left that bunt back in Weininger's mitt. And Rainer, he very interesting talking about that. He said, yeah, they had to earn it. Now, they earned it, and I'll give them a sign. Okay, you have the go-at-any-time sign. He does not have a don't-run sign. He wants an aggressive club, and he teaches aggressiveness. And Sample is perfect if he gets aboard. Oh, what a diving stop by Nettles, and he got him at first. Ray Nettles makes a magnificent play. And Rainer's going to come out and argue. Let's watch it. You play umpire now. Nettles, the diving, diving pattern the play that he makes, comes up firing, and you call him. I wow. call him safe. John Hirschbeck, the umpire, is taking a little heat now. What a great play by Nettles. And you know, it's a little surprise to see a good defensive play lately with the Yankees because they've made 17 errors in their last seven games. But that nettles is something, but Raider is hot. I don't blame him. Larry Barnett moving him out of play. We got two angles for you. Now you look at him. The umpire called him out. Now you call it. Here's another one. And as they say in the courtroom, the defense rests. Well, if I'm on the jury, I rule safe. Okay. And with one out, Dave Hostetler, who singled in the run in the second inning at the plate. Checked up, but it's in there. He started out with a couple of home runs. His last home run last year came on August 17th, and then Hostetler didn't hit a home run in the last 46 games. On Wednesday night, he hit his first home run since May the 2nd. He has only three. He hasn't been playing very much. In 1978, he was a big man on campus at USC. He hit 16 home runs to break a single-season college record of 15 held by Rich Dower. Round ball of the hole. Up with it there is Robertson, and the throw is in plenty of time. Andre Robertson handling the shortstop chores. Two down. Nine in a row retired. Peter O'Brien coming up. What a difference a year makes. Look where Texas was on this date a year ago. Twelve and a half back and out of sight, really. A remarkable tribute to basically the same kids and the new manager, Doug Rader. The front office has to get some uh, Absolutely. audits, too. There's a hopper back of first, fielded there by Smalley, overhands to his pitcher coming across, Fontenot, and that's it. So they're gone in the fifth. It's ten in a row retired by Ray Fontenot, and at the end of four and a half, there's a lot of O's. Texas one, Yankees nothing. You're looking.
looking at a marvel of automotive design. Every part, state of the art. The powerful Pennzoil Penske IndyCar. Roger Penske built it for reliability. It takes the skill of Rick Mears' IndyCar champ to handle it. And when his engine's turning over 10,000 RPMs, he needs a motor oil engineered for reliability to stand the strain. Pennzoil motor oil for top engine protection, whatever you drive. Protection you can rely on. Pennzoil. Sure, I'd like to get rid of some of this gray, but I don't want a solid dye job and look ridiculous. Herd Grecian really does the job. I'll give it a try. Hmm, looks like water. Not much change, but I think the gray's going. Slowly, gradually, and no one's noticing. Now that's the way I used to look. Even like the gray I left on the sides. Wife says I look great. Boss asks if I lost weight. Why did I wait so long? Grecian Formula 16, liquid and cream. This is one of my bigger days. <laughs> Let me buy a beer. Sure. Ah, these fans, I love them. When I came in, they didn't recognize me at first, but then when I told them who I was, next thing you know, they're buying me my favorite beer, light beer for Miller. They know us ex-big leaguers drink light because it's got a third less calories than their regular beer, it's less filling, and it tastes great. Thanks. Hey, it's a pleasure to buy a beer for a great pitcher like Whitey Ford. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so I lied. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Hey, Whitey, I thought you were a lefty. Oh, that's right. <laughs> At Fenway Park, the Red Sox have come alive after a Dwight Evans home run his 18th of the year. Dave Stapleton connects off of Gorman Heimuller, his fifth of the season, and now the Red Sox lead it 4-3. Well, some things just seem to go right. Red Sox making noise and hitting home runs at Fenway Park. We'll see them in two weeks, Joe. Yes, sir. I'll tell you, it's going to be a good finish. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. Boston began the day seven and a half back. Now Steve Kemp, Roy Smalley and Jerry Mumphrey in that order against Mike Smithson. We were talking before about the vast improvement of the Texas Rangers and you said the front office and I think among others but the guy who should take a big bow is Joe Klein because Joe and Doug Rader have worked very well together from what I hear. Fontaine of the Giants is the first one who believed in Raider because his past history of all his flaky stuff, which people ought to put to rest, but it was Joe Klein who said, hey, he's a good manager. Forget that stuff. Right. Bowed away off to the left out of play. 0 oh, 2. Raider was a good ball player. He was as flaky, as wacko as any player to ever come along. But not now. And it did, but it didn't bother his play. Oh no! No sir, he was a tough ball player. In fact, one series, Houston in Los Angeles, and Walter Alston said it was the best three games he had ever seen a third baseman play defensively ever, anywhere, anytime. High fly ball, curling foul down the left field line, out of play. Let me give you an example of how it's been reported. He went into a movie theater, bought an ice cream sandwich, threw the ice cream away, ate the wrapper, and then pretended to faint and rolled down the yeah. steps. To read it in the paper, you would think the theater was jam-packed. It was in St. Louis. The only people in the theater were the two guys going with him. <laughs> it was not quite portrayed the way it actually occurred. Oh, and two, the count. Oh, one. And if Billy can just stay away from marshmallow salesman, he's all right. He's okay. <laughs> It's only 310 down the right field line, as the players call it a short porch. You would expect Kemp to hammer some holes down there, but he hasn't. He has only two home runs at Yankee Stadium, and one of the two is inside the park. Other seven he hit on the road. Two and two. Breaking ball and a one hopper drilled to Bill Stein. So Kemp taps out. One away. I'll tell you, it's a thrill to come here. Even though it has been changed a little bit, it is still Yankee Stadium. And there's something special about this place. 29 Hall of Famers have passed through here. You know, when Babe Ruth finished playing here, I assume that they took that number three and put it in glass but they didn't they sure didn't you know the great Babe Ruth's number after he left was worn by George Selkirk Allie Clark 
Bud Metheny and Cliff Mapes, and then finally they decided to retire. I mean, uh, so he wasn't revered even when he was tearing the place apart. Well, sometimes it takes teams a long time to retire your number. Yeah, and you know, it's ironic. The Yankees really, I think, are the first team to regularly wear numbers. You would think they would have an extra special feeling about a player's number, and certainly about Babe Ruth. But he was just, uh, okay, so long, Babe, and gave the uniform to the next guy. What about Detroit? A couple weeks ago, they retired Garringer and Greenberg. Yep. What great stars they were. I think it, sometimes you just take it for granted. for Babe Ruth's number? Joe Medwick. And you're going to say, what? There's a line drive base hit in the right center field. Riot and Parrish bump together, and Wright gets it back in. Medwick? Yet Joe Medwick wore a Yankee uniform, number three, in spring training. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's go back and look at that swing by Smalley. with that base hit is a great tribute to home cooking. You look at his average. 325 at home and 214 on the road. Did you play better at home or on the road? No, seriously. I'm serious. I don't know. I didn't play. I played about the same. Mr. Consistency. That's about it. I can't really tell. It's like asking me my plane weight. How do I know what it is? I never played that much. <laughs> Here's Jerry Mumphrey. Ball one. Maybe really Maybe they didn't break it down that much as they do today without yeah, a computer. Really yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, you get statistics now coming out of your oh. navel for crying out loud. Yeah. What you did at night, what you did with a full moon. What do you do on grass? What do you do on astroturf? Yeah, exactly. One ball, no strikes. High slicing fly ball down the left field line. Billy Sample coming in the corner at the wall. It's back in the crowd amongst the customers. And wait until. Like Atlanta has been studying two years to come up with computers. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have a terminal and a dugout, and you punch it out and you get a readout. And Oakland is doing that with Boris now, mm -hmm. computer readout. I mean, the fuse box is going to blow, and we'll have a whole season go right down the drain. Down the two. Roy Smalley at first has stolen three and been caught three, so you see whether Billy Martin has a play on. He's not going. And the breaking ball is inside to Jerry Mumphrey. Remember, we told you that Jim Sunberg has a sore shoulder. I'm wondering if the Yankees are going to test it or not. I would think on this pitch they would. Two balls and one strike to count. Smalley doesn't go. And the pitch is a one hopper through in the center for a base hit. Smalley is around second on his way to third as Wright gets the ball back in and the Yankees are in business. Runners at first and third with one out. So with the Rangers leading one to nothing in the fifth inning, the Yankees get their first man to third, Roy Smalley, and the batter will be Andre Robertson, the shortstop. One away. And with Billy Martin, the unpredictability of Billy Martin, you have to look for anything. I mean, you look, if you were catching right now, as Sunberg is doing, you'd be alive for the possible squeeze. There's one out, and the worst you would come out of it would be second and third and two outs. And the other thought now, of course, we're talking about Sunberg and a questionable arm, whether Jerry Mumphrey might try to go. He is a very, very successful base stealer. His lifetime, Mumphrey steals successfully seven out of every ten times. Now back. It was a couple of years ago in the National League with San Diego. Mumphrey, number 22, he had 52 stolen bases. Over a third, Roy Smalley. If Andre you, Robertson, you know, had a lot of trouble, and Lou Pinella's the guy who's taking him under his wing. Start to say, Ben, if you're keeping track of pitches, it would be maybe Smithson is tiring. First inning through five, second six, third inning two, fourth ten, fifth seven already. So no one throwing in the bullpen yet. One and one to count. Six eight has the most.
most complete games on the Texas staff. So apparently he's big and strong. He has a half a dozen complete games. One and one. Mumphrey doesn't go. Ground ball inside third and down the line. That gets Smalley home. Mumphrey going to third. Robertson will go to second. And it's 1-1 one, one in the fifth inning. Pitcher in a spot like that when you usually get the blast because all he went out and tell him was, hey, get him because Winfield's on deck. He says, Don't you think I know that, dummy? <laughs> Three and one to count. In there. You know the other thing, a catcher goes out to the pitcher and talks to him, right? right? Then goes behind the plate and gives a sign. Why? Why didn't he just go out and say, okay, throw the curve? Just don't want to break the rhythm. Keep him thinking. Three and two the count. Fastball missed to load him up. So he gambled, went three and two and walked him. And Dick Sutch, the pitching coach, on his way out to the mound. The base is loaded and Dave Winfield has hit the ball twice for four outs lined into a double play grounded into a double play and the big guy coming up now hungry with the bases loaded 
And Rader with his back to the wall here. And the pitching coach right now is just going over basics. And the last thing I'm, I'll guarantee you he's telling him is watch the first ball because he's not going to let you get ahead of him. Now the line drive he hit was a breaking ball, hit it hard. The double play that Winfield hit into looked like it was a sinker ball, the outside part of the plate he tried to pull. So Winfield has it cataloged. They went over what the previous pitches were and the strategy. But I'll guarantee you that first pitch will have something on it or be in a real good spot. Put in the category of Winfield has to hit Smithson's pitch. And as you saw, no one moving around in the bullpen. So it'll go head to head. Two big men. Six feet eight inches. Mike Smithson. Six feet six inches. Dave Winfield with the bases loaded. Two out. Fifth inning. A one one tie. And Winfield only the ninth player in history to hit 30 or more home runs in both leagues. Coming up. First, Robertson at second, Mumphrey at third, the infield back in a normal depth, and the outfield deep and around to left. They give him almost all of right field. Ball one. Lee Sunberg gave him the pitch inside. He wants to send him to Jam City, get that ball in on his hands. He got that ball a little bit out. It was a ball, but it was out over the plate. No strikes to Big Dave. That one's low, so now he might be trying to aim the ball and he's behind 2 and 0, oh, and Winfield checking with Zimmer. Well, you know he's hitting, and in this particular spot, you want your hitter not only to look for a particular pitch, but a particular pitch in a particular spot. Not only a fastball, but a low fastball, a low inside fastball, or whatever. Zero in on one spot. In bullfighting, they call it the moment of truth. Now, here it is.
left-hander, the only left-hander available in the bullpen. They used Butcher last night. We won't see him today. Three and one. High fly ball into straightaway center. George Wright under it with the runners all making their turns, and he holds on to it. So the Yankees in the fifth inning come up with two runs on three hits and two walks and leave three. And at the end of five, the Yankees two and the Rangers one. In the time it takes you to push the button on Polaroid's new Sun 600 light mixer, it's already made 32 decisions to improve your picture. It's decided whether you're shooting indoors or out. It's infrared sensor and light management system have decided how much strobe you need. And an electronically balanced exposure has been captured on the fastest instant color print film there is. In fact, our new Sun 600 even has a little feature to help you make a decision of your own. It's technically known as a bargain. It's here, the 84 Ford Tempo, America's all-new aerodynamic sedan, with mileage ratings this high, because Tempo has the world's most advanced automotive computer, which continually monitors vital engine functions. This helps deliver a quick power response. Watch how front-wheel drive handles corners. Feel its independent suspension tame the surface. Experience style and technology in total harmony. Have you driven a Ford lately? Firestone presents the performance one, the 721, the sure-footed one, the 721, the long mileage one, the Firestone 721. More than conventional radial construction, 721 construction. Seven tough steel cords around two wrapped by one. Make it the one for every road. The 721 or the 721 metrics all season. Firestone, we're the one with the 721. America takes on the world. The event, the sprints, and Evelyn Ashford is going for the gold. The World Championships of Track and Field on NBC. Left hand to Ray Fontenot, Sultan Ray Fontenot, out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. And the left hander has finally gotten a lead. He has struck out four today in his previous high in his other two outings, one strikeout. So this has been a pretty big day for him. Jim Sundberg will start it off against him, followed by Wayne Tollison and then Bill Stein. Ball one. We were talking about Sundberg and how they might run on him. He hasn't been throwing well. The Rangers have had to pitch out a lot. In fact, he had to have his arm finally examined over the All-Star break. They found that he had a strain of the rotator cuff, but not a tear. But it's a sore arm. Two and zero to Jim Sundberg, and he hits it slicing, and Mumphrey on the run is there. One away. Tollison, the shortstop, coming up. Tollison is another guy a little banged up. He hurt his neck in a home plate collision with the Angels end of June. But he is very tough and scrappy. He's an ideal Doug Raider type player. He was a football player who led the nation in pass receptions at Western Carolina U in 1976. Have to be a fan to keep track of Western Carolina U. But, uh, he did and bangs it up the middle. Second the Rangers have been very quiet. They had their back to back hits for a run in the second inning and haven't been heard from until that single by Tollison. Now, this would be a situation where uh, Raider would give him that sign of you're on your own or you're not on your own. He also said he plays hit and run with Bill Stein. Ball one. Tollison has a great ratio of success. He has stolen 21 bases and he's only been caught three times. So let's see if they put a play on. It's two to one Yankees, top of the sixth. Smalley, 
Camp and Aris Robertson and Nettles on the infield. Winfield, Mumphrey, and Kemp in the outfield. Butch Weininger behind the plate. And Ray Fontenot on the mound. One and two. He's not an overpowering left hander by any means. It looks like they're swinging right through that pitch. He's got a pretty good sinker, and he's around that plate. Yankees two, Rangers one, top of the sixth. And they're going to keep an eye on Tolleson. Second for one to first, not in time. So the force play 6 4. Campanaris never really had a chance to make a turn. Tollison was right in on top of it. You get a good look at it. He really doesn't get a whole lot on the ball. You can see he used the bag, put it between him and the runner for the protection, but it cost him enough time to where he missed the play at first. Weininger just reminded the young man that Mr. Stein might be going. Stein has against Tollison's great running. Stein has stolen two and been caught to, but you have a hit and run man up there in Buddy Bell because Raider said he likes to play hit and run with Tollison, Stein, and Bell. Well, he didn't do it. With Stein, we'll see if he does it with Bell. Stein at first. Two down here in the sixth inning. Ball one. Two to one Yankees. Two runs, six hits, and the Rangers one run, just three hits. Two rookies, Ray Fontenot and Mike Smithson, they put on quite a show. Say from the looks of Stein's lead that they're going to let Buddy Bell just swing away without any kind of distraction. Buddy has 10 home runs, 45 RBIs, and the count two balls and no strikes. So he'll have a look at Wayne Tewilliger, the twig in the third base coaching box. Boy, that was a tough infield to call on a double play on radio in Chicago. It was a ground ball when you had to Williger, to Ramazzotti, and Ramazzotti to Tewilliger to Cabaretta. And that was uh, a league-leading supply of syllables. What was so hard about Ramazzotti and Cabaretta? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just the twig in the middle. That's just right. Three and one. In my own neighborhood, that'd be like Smith That's and right. yours. Smith and Jones. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Buddy Bell up there, and it's two to one Yankees, top of the sixth inning. Two down. Stein at second. Stein is not much on running. He didn't have a stolen base last year. But now three and two, two down, they can turn him loose. Big chopper foul outside of third and down the line. Smalley, the first baseman, is playing behind the runner Stein, and Stein's not going to get picked off. He's actually closer to coach's box than he is anything else. He's about a step and a half off first base. Yeah, you can tell he's not an adventuresome runner, and in looking over his career, he has never stolen more than four bases, and that was in the minors. So Stein, a very short lead. He goes. Killer at the plate. Three and two. For Texas, they set a, a major league record recently in a 15 inning game with Oakland. They scored 12 runs in the 15th inning. They won another 15 inning game against Milwaukee, so they played some dandies this year. There he goes, and a ground ball down to third, and it's kicked. 
Greg Nettles kicks it. And so it goes. I think that ball hit him too. Up around the right thigh. A rare sight indeed when Mr. Nettles doesn't come up with the ground ball. Remember we told you the Yankees have been making a lot of errors. That means 18 errors in their last seven and a half games. This one isn't over. Larry Parrish hit back to the box and struck out. 0 for 2. In 1979 he hit 30 home runs from Montreal. Never hit that many over here. He had 17 last year. And a little number. Fontenot down to get it. The left hander turns and throws him out. No runs. One hit. There was an error. And two left. And at the end of five and a half innings at Yankee Stadium in New York, it's the Yankees two. And the Texas Rangers one. Fifteen. We got this game won. Yeah, you got to buy the light beer from Miller. Yeah. Let's go, Philly. One out to go. Yeah, what can he do to us now? Hey, I'll keep the change. Here's Rodney. Left. Here I am. Come on, Lee! Come on, Lee! Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Hey, wait a minute. This game isn't over yet. I caught that ball. I've got one daughter in college and one getting married. And the last thing I need right now is to buy a new car. So every now and then I take the old Dodson down to Midas. Over the years, I've been a Midas for struts, brakes, a muffler, and I've always gotten a good deal. Oh, I'll treat myself to a new car one day. But right now, I've got other things I'd rather spend my money on. Trust the Midas touch. Burroughs lines a shot, a home run. Home run number six for Ba, or Jeff. And that cuts the deficit now to 5-4 in favor of the Red Sox, top of the sixth. Don't forget, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, it's live flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the CART Michigan 500. Rick Mears, Gordon, John Cock, Mario Andretti, and Indy champ Tom Sneva all expected to take the green flag at the second jewel of auto racing's triple crown. Tomorrow, right here on NBC Sports. Be there. We're here at Yankee Stadium. And here's the last out. Roy Smalley did a good job of shifting. Watch him go into foul territory to come up with that throw. And he thought Fountaineau had something on it. So that was a good play by Smalley. It's one of those plays that sometimes you see him make it, you take it for granted. Well, you know, you always hear people say about an infield, the boy's got great hands. But you play shortstop with your feet. And, of course, Smalley is a natural shortstop. And you can see the good footwork even over there at first base. Ground foul on the count 0-1. Baylor struck out twice. So he's a little hungry. And the second time, he was loud hungry. Remember? <laughs> he, he ate up Ken Kaiser on a call strike. Well, he didn't eat up Ken Kaiser. No, no he way. took a small nibble out of a 288-pound umpire. Take about a week to get that job done. You better bring a lunch pail <laughs> if you're going to argue with Mr. Kaiser. Oh, and one to count. Don Baylor. Foul back. Oh, and two. Mike Smithson done a fine job, weakened in the fifth inning when he gave up the two runs and three hits. Walked in the go-ahead run and then got Nettles to get out of the big jam or he's gone. Consistency thou art a jewel and in a sense that's Don Baylor. At home he has five home runs, 20 RBIs. On the road he has five home runs, 16 RBIs. Fly ball to right field. Larry Parrish is there. A little gust of wind almost pulled that away from him. 
from the flags atop the center field portion of the stadium it looks as if the wind might have changed just a little bit one down and Steve Kemp the batter Kemp has lined out and grounded out pretty hard to say just what direction they are right now watching it swirl when the game started it was 97 degrees 53 percent humidity which is not bad Camp 0 for 2. Bell coming over right at the railing leans over I think he might have caught it yes he did so Buddy Bell got his glove on it and held on to it fine play you know when you look at those major league highlights Buddy Bell has got about four of these plays where he just goes into the stands into the dugout and the key to it is he knows exactly where he is, and he just stays right with it. Now, he knows he's got the wall measured right there. Look at the little kid with the glove. See him? See that little kid there? He was trying to catch that ball. Bell's a little taller. Yeah, unfair advantage. <laughs> Good play. And out. Well, here's Roy Smalley. Smalley struck out and singled one for two. Ball one. The Yankees two runs, six hits, and an error. The Rangers one run, three hits, and no errors. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Ran away, ball two. Billy Martin on Old Timers Day. signed his contract with the Yankees he had three years left on his Oakland contract he could have just sat home and cut coupons that was an interesting sequence there he gave the fastball sign and wanted it inside and Smithson shook him off he gave the fastball sign and said I want it outside this time and he agreed and there it was well as you can see seven of his ten home runs from this side of the plate merely suggests he, he really can't make the pitcher throw the ball he can suggest that this is the pitch that I want what do you think Sunberg suggesting about it trying to win his seventh. Just looking back through the pages on Smithson, his longest start, he went nine and a third innings in a loss to Detroit. But he big and he can go the distance. The Yankees beat him. He went six and a third innings May 1st. The Yankees beat him eight to four. Started out in great style. He was 3 0 in April. Then they just didn't score any runs for him. And he was 3 7 since. We asked 
Rader about that and he said I don't know it's one of those funny things he said he follows Honeycutt in the rotation and it always seems like Texas scores a lot of runs for Honeycutt and then here comes poor Smithson and all the money's been spent. Three and two. Breaking ball and just foul again outside of first. You know, about two sequences ago we had a great tight close up of Smithson and as a catcher when you go down to give you a sign you really zero in on the pitcher's eyes and they do all kinds of things now watch Smithson he's looking all over the place now he's looking on the ground he hasn't looked at the catcher yet to fix the hat and the ball and the gun Does that tell you something it tells I mean, is there anything to, to draw from that no you just say well, when is he gonna look at me uh -huh. three and two high fly ball in the right center field Parrish and right deep goes Parrish to backhanded at the three Big play by Larry Parrish. He almost went to Queens for that one. So the Yankees are gone one, two, three, thanks to the great play by Parrish. It remains two to one Yankees at the end of six, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. This week, Eddie Murphy's right on target. Hawkley is dead, but who is behind it all? No. Saturday Night Live, it'll kill you! The enemies. These are the enemies of the adult mouth. What they leave behind can cause adult bad breath and cavities. This is a toothpaste strong enough, adult enough to clean up the enemies. Gleam. Gleam has an unbeatable cleaning system, an adult strength cleaning system to help clean up food and film. Plus, Gleam fights adult bad breath. And Gleam has proven fluoride protection against cavities. So, eat like an adult, but get a toothpaste strong enough to clean up this. Adult enough to clean up this. Get Gleam, adult strength Gleam, to fight the enemies of the adult mouth. If you've ever been ashamed of your white socks, Ashamed of your white shirt Or ashamed of your tights Then get Oxidol And you won't get ashamed to show it White. If dingy whites embarrass you, try Oxidol Because Oxidol has hard-working cleaners And a color-safe bleach Look, this shirt was muddied over and over And washed each time in a leading liquid This shirt was muddied just as often But washed each time in Oxidol You wouldn't be ashamed to wear the Oxidol shirt because it's whiter. So take off your shoes. Woo! Let's see those tights. Hey! Be proud of your whites. Because with Oxidol, you won't get ashamed to show it whites. Surviving Summer, starting Wednesday on your news station. We move to the seventh inning at Yankee Stadium in New York with the Yankees in a tough two to one ball game with Texas. And it'll be George Wright, the center fielder, taking ball one. And a big play by Larry Parrish in right center field to end the bottom half of the sixth inning. One and one. Ball two. Trying to get aboard, get something started. Ray Fontenot out of Louisiana. Pitching a dandy. Shot foul. Turned Terwilliger around. Two and one. Wayne Terwilliger. Fly ball into center field. Coming up for it is Mumphrey. Down. He's been busy out there. Yeah, let's count him up. Left fielder, Billy Semple. Six. Six. Right. Six putouts for Jerry Mumphrey in center field. And the batter, Billy Sample, doubled in the second inning and then lost a base hit on a magnificent play by Greg Nettles. Just kind of wander. I'm sitting here and I'm saying, 
Charlie Pride, the country western star, who works out with these Texas Rangers. He must be in his glory with them in first place because he's going through the dog day. Not wonder why he's not here. I bet he's be somewhere watching it. Ben. Yeah, he's got to be there. working somewhere else. Oh, foul off to the right, out of play. Boy, it takes patience since 1972. You know, it's interesting too that the Yankees, in their glorious history, have won four games by forfeit. And one of them, in a sense, involves Texas. By forfeit. Yeah, forfeit. Ball one. Where do you come up with these uh, little goodies? Let me give you the story. It was September the 20th, 1971, the ninth inning. The Yankees were leading Washington 7 to 5 in the ninth. Ground ball, it's going to go up the middle. Base hit into center field. The fans at that game, this was the last game to be played in Washington. Mm -hmm. And the fans decided they're not going to wait till the end of the game. And they're going to go run on the field and take the pitching rubber and the bases and the whole thing. And so the game was forfeited to the Yankees. Mm -hmm. And that Washington ball club moved to Texas. Does that sound like Bill Stern? No. No, okay. Paul Harvey. I have that What's the rest, the rest of the story? But that's true. That's okay. true. Okay, America. There you go. Look out for Sample now. With the club down by a run, he has stolen 28 out of 32. And Fadano is going to look over there right away. Seven. The Yankees two, Rangers one on the corner to Dave Hostetler. Hostetler singled in the Ranger run and grounded to short in the fifth inning. Sample on first base as he was trying to read Fontenot. One of the determining things in whether he's going to run or not is Hostetler. Of course, he's a flailer. He strikes out a lot, and of course, if you get a strikeout, you got to throw him out situation here. Look at him studying the pitcher. Two balls, two strikes. First baseman Peter O'Brien. And there he goes. Swung on and missed. The throw down hit him as he was sliding in. So Sample stealing his 29th base and Hostetler strikes out. And now O'Brien is going to be called away. They'll go to the bench. Right hand hitters, they have Anderson, Dent. Richard and Johnson and it's going to be Mike Richard coming up to hit and that you can see here's another shot of it but you can see that it was a straight steal no play on because sample just had his eyes glued on second base he almost overslid the bag but wouldn't have been close because the ball hit him Billy Martin's going to come out he wants to talk to his young pitcher Our please. Ladies and gentlemen. Mike Richard Coming up to hit with the tying run at second base. Mike Richard, number two. Mike Richard, and they're discussing him right now. But Richard, the on-deck hitter, tore up his knee in Baltimore back in April, trying to make a double play. And he just returned Wednesday night. But he's not going to get the job away from Tolleson. So they're thinking of using Richard as 
maybe a DH and sometimes in the outfield. Pretty good hitter. He won the American Association batting title in 1981. And we'll see what he can do now with the tying run at second, two out in the seventh. and seven RBIs. He's from Los Angeles and was selected by Toronto in the free agent draft. But they failed to sign him, so the Rangers got him in the second round. And he hits it to right field. Coming up for it is Kemp. He's got it. A little fly ball to right field, and they leave Billy Sample the tying run at second base. And at the end of six and a half, the Yankees two, the Rangers one. And now, another edition of the seventh inning stretch, one of the greatest Yankees of them all. And he worked behind the plate. Old Spice presents the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Old Spice antiperspirant and deodorant. They help stop underarm alarm 24 hours a day. Lanky six foot two, Bill Dickey looked nothing like a traditional big league backstop, but he joined the New York Yankees in 1928 and became the most durable catcher in history. Dickey starred in eight World Series and his snake quick arm snared foolhardy base runners for 17 years. Dickey was also a classy hitter, rapping 362 in 1936 and playing in eight all-star games. Always a Yankee, Dickey was also a great innovator, the first to discard the pillow mitt and use a lighter glove better suited for fielding. In all, he caught over 100 ball games a year for a record 13 consecutive years. The forefather of the continuing Yankee tradition, Bill Dickey always graced the tools of ignorance with dignity. It usually happens late in the day. Your underarm alarm goes off. Telling the world you need odor protection that keeps going as long as you do. You should have used Old Spice. Old Spice deodorant kills odor-causing bacteria and protects for 24 hours. Happened to me at a party last night. You should have used Old Spice. Old Spice helps stop underarm alarm for 24 hours. And now look for Old Spice solid antiperspirant in a new musk scent. At Fenway Park in Boston, the Red Sox ace reliever Bob Stanley having problems. Here, pinch hitter Gary Hancock, a double down the first baseline. It scores Mike Heath and Ricky Henderson. And now the A's have taken the lead. It is 7-5, top of seven. Let's re rejoin Ben and Joe. And boy, if the Red Sox can't rely on Bob Stanley, they're hurting. They started the day seven and a half games back. Larry Bittner has taken over at first base for Texas with the Yankees leading two to one in the bottom of the seventh inning. A much traveled Bittner who originally played for the Washington Senators in 1970. Then with Texas, then moved on to Montreal, then played with the Cubs, last two years with Cincinnati. So suitcase Larry Bittner at first base. That was after Richard hit for O'Brien. Jerry Mumphrey. Andre Robertson and Bert Campaneris in the bottom of the seventh inning, two to one Yankees. Right. Mumphrey against Smithson is four for seven this year. He had a home run and a triple back in May, and he's one for two today. Single in that fifth inning. Oh, that uh -oh. got Ken Kaiser. That gave him a nasty one. Looked like it got him right. I would say the right part of the chest. Foul tip. Watch it. I mean, that's one of those real stingers, too. Left. Well, he only missed by one. <laughs> one out of two ain't bad. That's, no. a, that's a pretty good target, though. I mean, uh, sometimes in the winter, he rents himself out as a handball court. <laughs> the size of it. The book says 288. Do you think he's fudging a little? A lot. A lot. Oh, and two the count. Uh, he's all right. Humphrey, Robertson, and Campaneras, bottom of the seventh, two to one Yankees. One and two. I know why I got the wrong shoulder. I was looking at the monitor, and I got switched around. That's right, like a mirror. Like the guy said, I was looking at the monitor instead of through my eyes. <laughs> one and two, the count, Jerry Mumphrey. And he hits a breaking ball deep to left field. Sample going back to the track at the wall, and it's 
gone. And he still hits Smithson. He's now five for eight, including two home runs against him. thought he had a chance for it he gets up uh, it is in the seats to the opposite field and he drove that ball there it was not a case of swinging late and happening to hit that ball there he drove it there so what has made the Yankee team a trademark down through the years the home run pops up and the Yankees lead three to one I think one of the greatest stretches of home run hitting the 1941 Yankees hit at least one home run in 25 consecutive games. They actually hit a total of 40. But you want to talk about a murderer's row? Huh? Ball two, two and zero. Oh. Yankees three, Texas one. Two and zero. Oh. Foul ball down the right field line, out of play. If you're not keeping score when Texas comes up in the eighth inning, they'll have Jim Sundberg, Wayne Tollison, and Bill Stein. Andre Robertson, the batter. Robertson has struck out and doubled. 3-1 New York. And that's hit down the right field line, foul and out of play. About two and a half weeks ago, just about just before the All-Star break, the Yankees thought they finally had it together. They really started to go on the move, and they had won 10 out of 15, beating Milwaukee, Boston, and Baltimore. In that stretch, Rigetti pitched the no-hitter, but then they started to sputter again. And down goes Robertson. A reminder, friends, this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Mike Smithson battling the New York Heat and the Yankees. Pretty good numbers. But he's being outpitched by Ray Fontenot, who has allowed just one run and four hits. Attendance today, 41,520. 41 5 2 0. Oh. When I was a kid growing up in New York, that would have been half a house here. In the old days at Yankee Stadium, you could have 80,000 before they rearranged the ballpark. That's a shot right through the legs of Smithson and on out into center field. So Campanaris, two for four. There's a guy who could have, who probably is older than some of the old timers that played before the game, and he's got two base hits. He's remarkable. So Campanaris singles right through Smithson's legs, and Butch Weiniger single twice and walk coming up. Yankees three runs, eight hits. Rangers one run, four hits, and the Rangers are moving around in the bullpen. No one throwing yet, but they're about to. You got a sense there's a play on this time at bat. Just have to sense that. Campanaris didn't like the footing that he got at first base, so he's going to kind of smooth it out and work a little bit. You see him coming back. He didn't really get solid footing. Loosening up now behind Smithson. Dave Schmidt. And there's a line drive base hit to right field. They're waving Campanaris to third. Parrish's throw goes to third, not in time.
was trying to get the paper and wave Campaneris. That's like somebody being attacked by a dog while he's on the porch getting the morning paper. He finally quit on the paper and waved Campaneris around, but he sure was busy. The paper's gone. He tried to get Campy to slide as he got near the bag, but it can't be too late to pick him up. Now, here he comes, motioning him on. Now, watch Zimmer telling him, down, get down, get down. Campanera says, too late, and Zimmy went over to talk to him. So the Yankees scoring twice in the fifth inning. Now a home run in the seventh inning, and Doug Rader going out to the mound, having seen Mike Smithson give up the home run to Jerry Mumphrey and then the base hits by Campanaris and Weiniger. Do up Dave Winfield and then Greg Nettles. Wind is beginning to swirl. In fact, out in left field, the grounds crew, one of them has come out to try to grab some of the paper. It just, there you see him. That is distracting, and Sam oh. was trying to do everything. It's almost like, you know the feeling? You ever go out and get the paper and you're not dressed? And somebody <laughs> drives by. That's right. Well, he he had one hand down, right. almost on the paper, one hand in the air, trying to wave Campanaris over. Yeah, and the pajamas were slipping. It was the cord had broken. That's right. <laughs> and I think they're going to bring Dave Schmidt in. It's a thin bullpen. Odell Jones and Schmidt are the right-handers available. John Matlack, the left-hander. So they'll come in with Schmidt. So Mike Smithson goes six and a third. And he goes out with the Yankees leading the Rangers three to one and two men on base, his responsibility. We'll be right back after this. could be a time when your home or condo insurance gets put to the test. But Kemper won't fail you. Call an independent agent for Kemper Home or Condo Insurance with features like convenient budget payment plans and full contents replacement coverage. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. I refinished this beautiful piece all by myself, and I can't even change a light bulb. A pro wanted $300 to refinish this. I did it myself for $15. Formby's Furniture Refinisher can make a believer out of you because it works unlike anything you've ever seen. It dissolves old varnish lacquer or shellac without stripping, sanding, or scraping. With my Furniture Refinisher, it's a pleasure to create a treasure. Homer Formby. No one knows wood as good. Many stores now have special values on my Furniture Refinisher. Four Nescort. We made it with four-wheel independent suspension for a big car ride. We made it with front-wheel drive for traction. We made Escort efficient, very roomy, and fun to drive. Day in and day out, and we made it in America. You, in turn, helped make Ford Escort the best-selling car in the world. Have you driven a Ford lately? Now, 9.9% .9 financing or factory cash available on new Ford Escorts. The world's top drivers seek the second jewel of Indy Car Racing's Triple Crown. The Kart Michigan 500, live flag to flag. Plus, survival of the fittest continues only on NBC Sports World. He's not getting ready to resume his wrestling career as the masked marvel. That's Ken Kaiser, the Texas trainer works on him. It is hot, 97 degrees. And what's the reaction here? I don't know what it is on that field, but I tell you, he had to just take a breather's behind the plate. Now, in fact, some of you may be even going to the fine-tuning knob on your television set, but because of the heat, our center field camera shot is a bit hazy. There's nothing wrong with your set. It's just, just hot. Hot. H-O-T. Boy, you wouldn't get any argument from Ken Kaiser. Meanwhile, Dave Schmidt comes out of the Texas bullpen to tune up. He is 2-0. Ratio of strikeouts to walks is excellent. It's three to one. He was, believe it or not, a 26th round draft pick. And he missed the first part of the year because of elbow surgery he had after last year. His first major league save came right here at Yankee Stadium when he got Dave Winfield to ground out to end the game with a tying run on third. And look who he's pitching to. Dave Winfield. 
He has Campanaris down at third, Weininger at first. Now I said I was against the save. I'm not against the save in that situation. Right. That is a save. I'm talking about saves when it's nine to one and the guy comes in and they give him a save. Gotcha. Well, they meet again. Schmidt and Winfield. Dave lined into a double play. Great play by Buddy Bell. Grounded into a double play and won. That's right. David Joseph Schmidt. He's out of Niles, Michigan. He attended UCLA. And he was on the same UCLA team with the Mets' Tim Leary. The infield with one out, hoping to get a double play from Winfield. Ground ball on the hands, hit down to short. They'll go to second but one, and to Bittner, double play. So Winfield is jammed, hits into his third double play of the day. The Yankees wind up with one run, three hits, one left. And the Rangers hanging tough at the end of seven. The Yankees three. Rangers won. Two blades are better than one blade. I get the fish she if I can get. Two blades are better than one blade. That's the good news razor from Gillette. The Good News Disposable Razor with two blades is better than any single blade disposable. With Good News, the first blade grabs the whisker and shaves it. Then the second blade can shave it again before it snaps back for a closer shave. Two blades are better than one blade. That's the Good News Razor from Gillette. The Good News Razor from Gillette. Some people save Mr. Goodrange only for big jobs. Me, I'm a professional myself. So I see him for even simple jobs, like brakes. A good technician doesn't just slap dash a job together. He keeps his eyes open. Look who we spotted. Yeah, trouble. Well, you better fix it now. Could head off big trouble later. And big expense. Keep that great GM feeling. Mr. Goodrange, he's a pro. With genuine GM parts. It's all here, in this lovely, peaceful corner of New York State. Memories. Memories of the great and legendary, of the bigger-than-life heroes of our youth. The Hall of Fame is the treasury of baseball's greatest memories and thrills. Baseball fever. Catch it at Cooperstown. It lasts forever. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Joe, let's take another look at that double play to end the inning. The pivot, I think, is what really made the play because Stein gets the ball. Watch him stay right there, and he gets rid of it even though the runner is about to take him out. Uh, if he'd have gotten behind, we saw Campanaris put the bag between him and the runner. I think if he does that, he loses the play. But he knows he had to make the double play, and he just hung tough. Now I got your question for you. All right, I got an answer for you. You've got one run. You're the Rangers, right? right. right. Runners at first and third, one out. It's the seventh inning, yes. and you're down three to one. Why isn't your infield up? Why is your infield back in double play depth? Good question. They did it and got away with it. Yes, it's strike did. one to Jim Sunberg. And I and, and I gotta believe knowing Rayner, he did it for a reason. Oh, I'm sure. And that's one of those things that gets lost in the ball game. And there's a base hit up the middle for Sunberg. Line drive single. He goes one for three. For Fontenot, they really have to keep an eye on him because it's the longest he's gone this year at any level for the Yankees or for the Columbus Clippers. He's into the eighth inning. But it's Cajun weather. It's hot and humid, and he's loose. That's only the fourth hit for the Rangers. And he's moving Andre Robertson just a tad to his left. The batter is Wayne Tolleson, the shortstop, in the dirt, but blocked nicely by Butch Weiniger and holding it first to Sunberg. He also was pointing to Robertson as if to say, I'm throwing to you, you're covering, which would almost tell you that if there is a play on, and I know they're trailing by two, but if there is a play on, the second base would, would be holding, which is unusual with the right-hand batter. 2-0 oh the count. Ray Fontenot one time in the Texas organization. 
And he's behind 3-0. And, oh, and boy, you bet they're going to watch him now. In fact, they're going to the mound. And Billy Martin, no doubt, dispatching Roy Smalley to go to the mound. And they will get somebody up in the pen for New York. Sammy it Ellis. The goose. Sammy Ellis just jumped right up as you were talking there, man. There's Gossage. So three and oh the count. He is a pitch away from putting the tying runs aboard. And he missed it. He's done it. First and second, nobody out. Stein, Bell, and Parrish coming up. And Billy's off the bench. With the right hand hitters stacked up one after the other, Stein, Bell, and Parrish. We'll see if he waits to go to the goose or not. It may be that Weininger's out there buying some time. Yeah. Smalley and Nettles are going to have a uh, conference right now. And a lot of times when there you see the goose, when the manager asks you to do that, you simply go to the next guy and say, I got nothing to say, but the manager wants me to talk to you. And here I am. So let me know when the umpire comes over and I'll start to leave. Well, they have gone back to their respective positions. Meanwhile, communication with the bullpen and Martin as if to say is he ready nope he's he's not and Stein bunts up along third and it's going to go Whoop. just foul it hit the very edge of the grass if it just stays an inch or two instead of hitting the rim of the grass that ball would have stayed fair watch it there it is and Nettles right there had already made his decision and that ball just curves out foul I asked Raider before the ball game. I said, do you, do you play the bunt much? No, he said, I don't like the bunt. But every now and then you are forced to play a certain kind of a game. And down three to one. He's not going to let him do it. Nope. No, sir. You're not going to the mound. Smalley wanted to come to the mound, and Ken Kaiser said, no, you want to come? No, no. And here comes Martin. You've already had a meeting. Yeah, but Billy's getting the job done. He's buying time. Oh, sure. care what he does he's getting the job done I thought Smalley and trying to read his lips I thought he said something about remind him I wanted to remind him and Kaiser said no you can't go to the mound now he is going to the mound and he's going to remind his pitcher and now here comes Billy with Larry Barnett right alongside of him to come out and get this thing moving. And Billy has bought all the time that he wants. And the goose, now he's just going to wait. And now he may just visit with him. Bring the goose in, he said. Okay. But he knew that when he walked yeah. out Oh, there. sure. <laughs> he knew that when Sammy was on the phone. Bring the goose in. It's a good thing for the Yankees that the butt goes foul. Oh, sure. Boy, and now. Or if Dan even makes the play and they have runners at second and third. We'll be right back. It's the Yankees three, Texas one in the eighth inning, and we got some. When it comes to three wheelers, the choice is simple. Whether you're picking for work, Picking for play. Just pick the Honda ATC. Follow the leader. He's on a Honda. Working around here, a guy gets very wet on the outside and very dry on the inside.
welcome to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. place to be for professional golf. Colonial Williamsburg lures the tour's top pros. The Anheuser-Busch Golf Classic. See the best on the best. Only on NBC Sports. What is it they say? Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. This is the only town in America where a guy could dress like that and nobody really notices him. <laughs> hey, pardon me, sir. Which way to Madison yes, Avenue? Uh, I mean, it's like every day. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, there's somebody else who doesn't wear a crown, but he might as well in relief circles, and that would be this man, Goose Gossip. ERA of two, and you can see his numbers. Last year, Gossip had 30 saves in 39 situations, and oh, what a bunt that was. Almost knocked the bat out of Bill Stein's hands on the count 0-2. Do you remember years ago when Gossage and Forster were throwing. White Sox. Yeah, I mean throwing. Yep. Oh, what a combination. What a nice bullpen, huh? Runners at first and second. You have Tollison and Sunberg. And Stein goes down on strikes. So that bunt that went foul is so important. And the batter now, Buddy Bell. Bell struck out, fly to center, aboard on an error. Made a brilliant defensive play to take an extra base hit away from Dave Winfield and turn it into a double play in the first inning. Ball one. Think about Gossage, and he just flat out says, I get in, I throw as hard as I can. He rears back and fires. Tying runs aboard. It's 3-1 Yankees in the eighth. That's a strike. One and one. Big, impressive, somewhat frightening. Goose Gossett. does not want to go 
tying run in motion. America's leader in radios? Goodyear. We outsell all foreign radios combined. And here's one reason why. The Goodyear Eagle GT. A high-performance radio that gives a great performance in the rain. With outstanding traction and superb handling on wet, slippery turns. The Goodyear Eagle GT. It's one reason Goodyear is the leader in radios. No foreign maker of radios even comes close. Goodyear, number one in radios. Thunderbird, from a new school of automotive design that brings new form to the function of driving. A new look, a new aerodynamic shape, which helps stability, handling, integrity on the road. This new school defines the difference between riding behind the wheel and driving. The new school of automotive design is called Thunderbird. Pure Thunderbird. Have you driven a Ford lately? Wednesday, what happens when the man you love to hate meets his long-lost daughter? You must have a couple of unattractive kids. How do you keep them off your back? Find out on Buffalo Bill. Late and great Dizzy Dean used to call it good old country hardball. Watch this great shot of Goose and watch how much he puts into it right here when he lets it go. Look at his body just twisting. Ugh. Effortless. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> a picture of fluidity. Yeah, poetry in motion. Boy, did he rear back Whew. the pump. Stein, Bell, and Paris struck him out. Okay, bottom of the eighth inning, three to one Yankees. Nettles, Baylor, and Kemp coming up. Strike. Dave Schmidt doing the pitching. Nettles struck out, walked, and fly to center. The modern day ball player has an expression for the fastball. They talk about bringing it. A guy can really bring it. Well, as far as Gossage is concerned, he brought it in the eighth inning. And he's taking a well-deserved breather there in the Yankee dugout. Oh, and two, the count to Greg Nettles. One and two. Good ball game. Rangers scored in the second. The Yankees came up with two in the fifth. And in the seventh inning, Jerry Mumphrey homered, and that's it. It's three to one New York, bottom of the eighth. Off speed, and he missed with it. Two and two. Tried to time that breaking ball, rolled it to Bill Stein, and they get the out. One away. The designated Struck out twice and flied to right. Schmidt picking up the pieces for Mike Smithson. That's right. Smithson went six and a third, allowed three runs and nine hits. Basically, the same performance he had against the Yankees on the 1st of May when he lost. Oh, and 2. Oh, that takes care of Baylor. Something in the air now as Schmidt 
borrows a little bit from Gossage to strike out Baylor, and the batter will be Steve Kemp. If you are not keeping score and you wonder about Texas in the ninth inning, they are due to send up George Wright, Billy Sample, and Dave Hostetler. They have two left-hand hitters on the bench, Jones and Rivers, if you're thinking pinch hitting against Gossage. out to second, grounded to second, and then fouled out, you remember, when Buddy Bell reached into the stands. So Kemp 0 for 3, struggling at 254. One and one. Yankees 3, Rangers 1, bottom of the eighth. field. Paris starts in. Now he has to backtrack a bit, but he's got plenty of room. So they wasn't close. Out in order in the eighth go the Yankees, and at the end of eight, the Yankees three, and the Rangers one. Three runs, nine hits, and one error. One run, five hits, and no errors for Texas. Right sample and Hostetler do up. If this can of gas gave the mileage of five regular cans, you'd buy it, wouldn't you? If this tire lasted as long as five regular tires, you'd buy it. Well, there is a battery that can last as long as five regular batteries. Duracell. Test proof one Duracell can last as long as five regular carbon batteries. So why buy five when you can buy one? Duracell. No regular battery looks like it or lasts like it. Now the Cavalry has changed the way car insurance works with Kemper Total, new car repair or replacement coverage. If your car is ever badly damaged in an accident, ordinary insurance might not pay enough to put you on the road again, but Kemper Total will pay the cost to repair your car if possible or replace it with a brand new car of the same make. About three extra dollars a month in most cases. Kemper Total, only from the Cavalry. Hey, Tommy Lasorda. How do you spell relief? Roger, I love to eat, but I don't always manage my stomach right. For heartburn, I spell relief R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Wherever I am, for heartburn, it's R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Rolaids really does spell relief. Like a sponge, Rolaids antacid medicine consumes 100% of the acid required to give millions 100% relief. With that batting average, it's R-O-L-A-I-D-S. For millions of Americans, Rolaids spells 100% relief. We're going to the ninth inning. Vin Scully along with Joe Garagiola from Yankee Stadium in New York, and it's the last roundup for Texas. Three to one Yankees with Billy, well, George Wright, Billy Sample, and Dave Hostetler do up in that order. Wright switches, takes a strike. He has struck out twice and fly to center. the glove of the diving Smalley who throws to Gossage. I think he's safe. That was a lot of movement there by John Hirschbeck. Watch this. Smalley diving slowed it down. Otherwise he's down in the corner for a double. Roy doesn't quit. Now let's watch and especially watch Hirschbeck on the call. What's it going to be? Safe? Yeah. Then he starts to wave as if it's foul, but it's safe. All right, right is aboard on an infield single off the glove of Smalley. And the batter is Billy Sample. Doubled, robbed of a hit, and single. He's two for three. So, of course, you think about now in a three to one game, the tying run is at the plate. And on deck, they'll go to Jones to bat for Hostetler. Foul out of play. Gossage so far has made 18 pitches and he has 15 strikes. And of course, one of the pitches was hit to the ground ball base hit. Hmm. Little message there one and two. center 
field. Mumphrey and Winfield, however, are there. Mumphrey for the catch, and back to first goes right. That's the deepest part of the ballpark because it falls away to 430 out there. So it's just a graveyard for a lot of hopes. One down. And now Bobby Jones will come up and hit for Dave Hostin. Jones from Colorado. Bobby Jones. Robert Oliver Jones by name. He's been around a long time. He was originally signed in the Washington Senators chain. He's 34. And he drives one to right center field. Mumphrey and Kemp on the dead run. Mumphrey makes the running catch. And back to first goes right. Oh, what a fine play by Jerry Mumphrey. Boy, we've seen two great ones. This one by Mumphrey and the other one by Larry Parrish. On the dead run to haul it in. Larry Bittner, who finished up for Pete O'Brien, is coming up. Remember, Richard batted for O'Brien, and Bittner stayed in the game. So two down. Ninth inning, Yankees three, Rangers one. Right at first. NBC Miller Highlight Player of the Game will be the rookie, Ray Fontenot. Miller Highlight happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Ray Fontenot to the Special Olympics.
It's here, the 84 Ford Tempo, America's all-new aerodynamic sedan. Tempo has a quick power response, plus mileage this high. One reason, a new level of aerodynamic design. Another, the world's most advanced automotive computer. Built right in, it continually monitors seven vital engine functions for optimum power under any driving conditions. Have you driven a Ford lately? When I'm playing ball, I don't care how much I sweat. It's part of the game. Oh, rap. But off the field, I want to feel nice and dry. And I want to smell nice. That's why I use Speed Stick Super Dry Antiperspirant. Speed Stick's the wide stick. Gives me effective protection in just a few strokes. Helps fight wetness and odor all day. Get the wide stick for protection. Speed Stick Super Dry Antiperspirant by Menon. Racing engines run hot. STP oil treatment fights the effects of heat in racing cars. Your car runs hot, too. In everyday driving, heat weakens your oil's vital protective properties. That's motor oil breakdown. STP fights motor oil breakdown. STP strengthens your oil, putting extra lubricants and anti-wear agents to work just where they're needed. Whenever you change or add oil, get STP oil treatment and fight motor oil breakdown. For eight hours a day, we're doing what we like doing. Can't beat that. Wanna bet? Welcome to Time. It's all yours and it's all mine. Bring your first self right here. The rich, smooth taste of Miller's beer. It's what you have in mind. So welcome to Miller Time. Welcome to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. The Major League Baseball Game of the Week has been brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Miller High Life, the best beer for the best time of the day. Welcome to Miller Time. By Goodyear, makers of Eagle High Performance Radials. And by Speed Stick, super dry antiperspirant. Goes on so dry you can get dressed right away. Speed Stick by Menon. The totals, three runs, nine hits, one error for the Yankees. The winner, Fontenot, and a save for Gossage. One run, seven hits, and no errors for Texas. Smithson takes the loss. He's now six and eight. Fontenot is two and oh. For Joe Garagiola, this is Vin Scully, wishing you a very pleasant good afternoon from Yankee Stadium. And right now, we're going to go uptown, cross town, downtown, all around the town, and go to 30 Rock after these messages from your local... A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. We serve more of this land's top 100 business centers than any other airline. Fly the friendly...